joining us. This is The War Room. Uh, we're going to be doing slightly uh, a different episode today um, to what you guys might be used to. So I'll explain a little bit about how it's going to go. So for the past four days, what we've been doing is doing uh, a daily recap of um, each of the days at Worlds. And what we've tried to do was do like an in-depth breakdown uh, of all the games that have happened, kind of give you our thoughts about uh, what are the important things that uh, we think happened. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is a bit is a bit different. We're going to be talking about the whole of the group stage first week, um, kind of more of a trying to give more of an overview. What are the prevailing storylines? What are the things that people need to be, need to be looking out for? And uh, what we expect going into uh, week two. So uh, with that in mind, I'll introduce you to our panel of experts today. Uh, with us, we have a very special guest. You may know him from the OPL LPL broadcast or as the former Dignitas LCS coach. We have Razzle Plasm, the one and only. Say hi, Raz. Hey, nice to be on the show. I also want to uh, introduce my friend, Odorless Cockroach Spray. Going to be needing nice. this one. I'm a little bit on <laughs> patrol at the moment. <laughs> only in Australia. Jesus. It's got to make that very clear. If I turn to the side, I'm looking for that motherfucker. <laughs> that's what I'm doing right now. I think the so best part, it came with a house, so that's that's a, an interesting detail. That oh, I yeah, I, did. I didn't even buy it. Yeah. I knew only exactly where it was. It came with a pot and pan, so. Only, only in Australia do you get free extra strength bug spray with your house. Anyway, of course, we have with me uh, our two regular co-hosts. I'll start with uh, NASA today. How are you doing, NASA? How's it going? Yeah. Um, doing well. Woke up just a bit, so I'm still prepared. Don't worry. Still gonna hit that hard analysis for you hey, guys. When you got it, you just got it. It's always ready. It's always there at the <laughs> tip of your tongue. Am I right? Yep. Marvelous. And of course, we have Shakarez, production wonder kid, and uh, very famous meme face on Twitter. You guys know him. You guys. Oh, know yeah. him. Please stop. The man of many meme faces. Anonymous. The man of anonymous with Pokemon. <laughs> the man of many, many faces. Okay, so right, let's get down to some some League of Legends analysis. So, oh my Sorry. God, what was that? Sound? <laughs> that was my phone. Of course, it was Shaka. <laughs> of course, it was Shaka. Right. EU so, production. EU production. Forehead. Right. Let's talk about some League of Legends. So, world's group stage. Day one. So I'm going to open with a bit of a, a kind of a a really open-ended question because I think it's it's best to start there. So, Raz, give me your give me your thoughts on on week one. How how was week one for you? Was it everything you wanted and more? I would say so. It was fairly exciting for almost every game. Uh, usually with uh, worlds, we have ourselves some groups that are freebies and they come out as freebies. Uh, maybe later on, like for instance, Pain came out uh, taking some games later on, but those. Unless if it was against Flash Wolves, they were simply because like teams just did not play well, uh, or at least didn't try. But this is just like legitimately week one. Every team is going hard at it, and it seems like uh, there's a lot of competition in these groups. Yeah, I agree. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. So, uh, what's been the what's been the biggest surprise for you? I think so far. Oof. I would say Albus Knox Nolina. That team right now is the team that if you if you watched the um uh, what was it called iwc q one yep. of those letters mm -hmm. the last one there yeah. we go uh iwc q they were a fairly good team but at the same time like you saw a lot of competition and the, the question was if any of those teams really had it going going into uh worlds like lion was supposed to be the big team coming in was like uh, essentially undefeated they came in like 6-1 or something in the group stages and they had mm -hmm. like some exceptional players and really showcased some weaknesses in uh albus Knox. and then albus Knox came out five full games going up against in in the finals and then now they're coming up and showcasing up against g2 and clg that's just ridiculous so that was the biggest surprise for me yeah so uh albus albus Knox, especially because like if you watch iwcq in groups in the the round robin they weren't really showing that much, right? They ended fourth. Yeah, they ended fourth, right? So they weren't really showing that much. Uh, you know, some signs of brilliance. I don't think they were. They knew, like after the first days, they were already almost locked in. So I think they, they didn't have to put as much effort as like INTZ, who who started off poorly um, in their WCQ. But 
yeah, I think I, I think they're 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 one of the big takeaways from this Worlds. Personally, I'm I'm uh, my biggest the biggest surprise for me has been how much Rox has struggled in the early game. Like if you look at them pre ten minutes, they look like a random diamond one team. You know, it's it's really weird. So yeah. Um. Yeah, I think those are two big things that happened. Um, another thing that kind of like surprised me was EU's performances. Uh, and we can talk a bit about later about why EU performed poorly in the first week later on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, did, I, I didn't expect G2, even with Expect and Perks not being on top form, to perform as poorly as they showed with all, and all the mistakes they made. So I actually have a question. So I mean, we can talk a bit about like more of the specifics. Um, in fact, no, let's 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 go into that straight away because I think yeah. um, let let's move up, let's move into uh, Group A because that seems to be the logical place to start. So I mean, I'm going to follow up with with what Nasa, uh, Nasa said. So, what do you think about um, G2's performance in relation to COG's performance? Because for me, I think I mean, I I actually predicted the COG to come out swinging, um, and I was pretty mm -hmm. I, I was pretty hard on that point. I think. Um, and for me, I think even beyond that, like COG has, has surpassed even my pretty high expectations. Um, I yeah. think despite the fact that they dropped a game to ANX, who admit he have looked much better than I think anyone could have predicted uh, or reasonably predicted. Um, I think that um, definitely COG for me has been like the big surprise of group, uh, the group A. So what do, you, what do you think about, is it, is it necessarily G2's performance being really bad? Or do you think maybe the ANX and, and CLG have actually just performed way above expectations? Hmm. For me, it's a bit of both. Uh, I think that uh, G2 came, came in fairly weak. And the one big strength for G2 was Trix, because even in the game uh, when he was playing Lee Sin, I'm trying to remember which one that was up against. Alibus Knox, actually, that was their loss. I think Trix mm -hmm. played really well. In his early game, he actually controlled, uh, was uh, playing towards... Because in that game, they actually had really good shoving lanes uh, early on, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Ezreal Karma can pretty much like poke and deal with that lane in the bottom lane un until he goes and purchases tier. Then, of course, he's, they're not going to be able to skirmish and poke. Yeah. But his least in play, he was able to help out perks when, he was, when his lane was fairly awkwardly shoved in. So he was kind of like trying to forcefully shove the lane in because... Kira had a, pers uh, a decent freeze on in that lane. So he was pretty much passively supporting the lanes when they had all winning lanes in that aspect. So I think he, even in that one major loss, he was playing really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think also CLG, um, they've looked sharp in many aspects. Uh, one is draft. I think they understood draft really well right now, uh, especially with the poppy pick. Uh, not necessarily being forced to play the carry-oriented top lane style, mm -hmm. even with Darshan. I think they want to play off their bottom lane, and their bottom lane has showed up huge so far. I knew going into the tournament that Stixe and Afro had good laning, and they were probably the two best players, or like Stixe with Xmithy uh, were the two best players on the team. But I didn't expect them to really take small advantages in lane and snowball, snowball them outside uh, in team fights and skirmishes and so on. Uh, they just seem really like a tight neck group right now. They know how to play the game. The, they know how to uh, snowball gold leads. When they get that early game lead, they know how to snowball it. They, they know how to not concede too many objectives. They only lost one mid turret and that was in their loss versus SK uh, versus G2, excuse me. And versus rocks, they didn't lose any, uh, mid, any like any mid turrets. So I think they look sharp micro wise. I think their draft looks good. I think their players more or less are performing really well. They just need to put Huhi on one of his comfort picks uh, and keep and just like keep going on this momentum. Mm. For me, the thing I agree that, with that. Yeah, go on. Yeah, you, you go first. Actually, um, I, I was gonna say that for me, uh, G two. What confuses me about them is that. Um, They've shown like these little signs of brilliance for me. Like you look at some of their like against rocks, for example, uh, Miffy going top, like uh, preemptively preventing the the Nocturne gank was really smart. So they show they show these little micro, uh, micro and macro decisions that are really good.
But then they have others that you look at them and they're like, this is not G2, this is not the G2 I know. Like Trick, Trick wasting a lot of time as a lease versus CLG, for example. Um, their failure to recognize that bot lane wave was going to crash and, and Miffy was not in lane to help to to help Zen, so that lane was going to crash on Zen, and it's an easy dive. Um, yeah. Those those sort of things, perks pathing on roaming, really bad pathing, you know, uh, and then like the uh, Miffy uh, forcefully trying to defend mid turret with no backup, like these little things. Uh, like sometimes they show show up really well, and then they show up these things where you look at them and you're like, what is this decision making? This isn't G two, the G two we're used we're used to, so. Yeah, it's, it's really weird to me. And what, what did you want to follow up on, Raz? Uh, my biggest point was going to be on CLG, where mm -hmm. I, going into this tournament, I think, I, now, I have a reputation for trolling my pickums, but at the same time having some reasonable <laughs> like points on that. Uh, <laughs> um, for me, I, I, I'm coming in as a CLG fan, but I definitely felt like G2 is going to be able to come in strong. I still believe yeah. that CLG were going to come, come in stronger than they showed in the playoffs and regular season, but I didn't think that even with their newfound strength that they would be better than G2. So that was actually something that was fairly surprising to me, that even though they did play really well, the fact that it was a combination of a CLG actually playing, uh, a playing, outplaying their, own, their older performance, but at the same time G2 is just making a lot of... A, it's a bit of... I would say that they're a lot of overconfidence in their play, a lot of greediness in G2's play, but at the same time, it's, I'm, I can't explain some of the plays they make, and I feel like it's probably something that goes back to um, some internal problems. I, that's obviously an assumption, right? But the, so at some point, you kind of have to talk about assumptions because if they're showcasing something that is simply not their play in regular season, then you know that they have what they're just simply not showing. Mm. Yeah, and for the, as for the problems that G2 has right now and why maybe they've had a poor showing in the first week. Um, I think one of them is the kind of meh right now uh, with the top carry oriented picks. I think now that we've seen that Poppy can be not really a counter, but something that can survive and scale up even with a, a CS deficit. I think since Expect is their we weakest link, and they haven't really all season played around top and like around carry top picks. They should put expect on Poppy if it's available or any other utility picks that might come out um, from uh, this week's like scrim prep. Uh, the other thing is I think the team communication is still horrid, uh, like we've seen during the summer split. I don't think there's good communication between the, their top lane and the rest of their map. I don't think there's good communication between their mid laner and their jungler. And we've talked about this already, um, but just to go really briefly, it seems like their mid laner and their jungler don't know how to communicate where the enemy jungler is. So Perks is always in a situation where he ends up get, getting ganked or easily ganked. Uh, maybe it's because Perks isn't listening to Trick or maybe because Trick isn't providing enough information. And a part of it is also because Perks is misplaying lane as well. Um, but these issues, I don't think, will get fixed in one week. Like, these issues have been going on all summer long. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it getting fully fixed for week two. With that said, I do think that, that G2 will grab a win, maybe two, um, just because they might understand what meta picks they need to pick uh, in order to band-aid some of their problems. And I also think that they can still win off their bottom lane strength. So, yeah, I actually think that, yeah. uh, just to piggyback I, I, uh, on that point, is that um, they actually played really well against um, uh, Rock Tigers. And that's actually a really good game mm -hmm. to really to, po to point out, simply because that uh, I know that there's a lot of certain criticisms with Perk's build. But regardless of that, that was a win that they should have gotten off that Baron. Um, oh, yeah. And the way... And I don't think no one really has mentioned it, um, but that Baron, because there's three ways you t go about taking Baron, right? You either um, take the Baron, or at least you, you you start the Baron to take the fight, or you take you start the Baron and try to avoid the enemy jungler, or like kind of push, uh, isolate him so you can actually can secure the smite, or you're just that confident in the fact that you can actually just uh, take the smite, or at least outsmite that um, entire situation. Now, 
you don't get that third option unless if you have like a Callista who can actually just has an or like a Nunu or a Cho'Gath that has that extra execute damage. In that fight, they had that option with Jin, like, and they went for that pick. So if you're gonna have Jin, you have to hold on to your fourth bullet to to get the execute damage. Now, obviously, you don't know what the communication is like on that team uh, in that situation, and you're on stage. That's a a major situation to put yourself in. But if you're going to put yourself in that situation, maybe if the call is to commit to taking that smite fight between Nocturne and I forget who the jungler was. I think yeah, it was Olaf then you have to utilize your fourth bullet on Sven. So that was actually something that I think was a misplay on him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, on. I think uh, one of the things that... I, I actually think the CLG have definitely done a lot better, and I think the G2 have pl played a lot worse. But I think it's not all like Sunshine and Rainbows for CLG. I've actually yeah. been a little bit concerned about some of the way they play like parts of the game. So I think, uh, for me, uh, one of... One of CLG's big strengths that they've come into this uh, this this tournament has definitely been their their jungle control. They actually look a bit like a kind of a budget uh, TSM in the way they approach the early game. You know, I think uh, not to, uh, I think uh, Smithy and Afro synergy has been really good. Afro has always been there with with uh, with Smithy as he invades. I think particularly against uh, I can't remember if it was Nox or ANX, but they were invading on the blue buff uh, and they realized that the jungler was there and then. Um, Afro kind of stayed around for a bit while Smithy then went and invaded the red side as, instead, um, which I thought was pretty cool. But one of the things that I think a couple times Afro has been uh, like almost caught um, that, like versus rocks when um, so the way the way the rocks game works is obviously everyone remembers the Aurelian Soul Room level one down to the bottom lane. But then what yeah. they did, what, what everyone doesn't remember is that when um, Afro um, after getting the second kill. In bottom lane he like went to roam towards mid but he didn't realize that like peanut was at his wolves and peanut was on uh was on uh oh what was he playing Rek'Sai. yeah yeah, yeah. So, sorry peanut was on Rek'Sai. sorry i couldn't remember the champion name yeah so peanut was oh, on Rek'Sai. Right, right. so you know that like peanut will see him if he's inside his jungle and they know that peanut started they're like they know that peanut would start at top side because they had a ward on his blue mm -hmm. um so uh, like they knew that he would be there around three minutes and Afro was there like bang on three minutes and he got caught and had to flash um, There's also been a couple of times as well like versus ANX they like overstayed for some mid towers and stuff so I think that Excuse me. Well, well CLG's early game has definitely been good. There's definitely some cause for concern I think that it, it looks to me like they understand the right places to be but I think they're mis-executing on a couple of things so I think some of the things that they uh, they do, like some of the, the some of the picks that they get, some of the dives that they do, are a little bit misexecuted. Like they did a dive versus uh, I can't remember who it was. They dived. It was G two, I think it was G two, or it might have been the ball lane dive. Yeah, yeah, it was G two yeah, or A and X. Yeah, it was G two. Yeah, yeah, but it was only because Expect was like so late on the TP they didn't get turned around because it ended up being a one for one, and I think it was oh, like yeah. Afro got away with like really low HP, and like if if. The other team had have played it better, like CLG would have been punished for that. You know, like a good team would have punished CLG oh, yeah, for yeah. that dive. That and I think that like um yeah, I think there's like but I think this has generally been the theme of world so far, is that like there are some teams, there have been some good players, but I think there's a lot of players that just haven't been punished because teams just across the board are not playing to the level that I would expect for like the sixteen best teams in the world, you know? Like yeah. it's yeah. not been quite that, that level. Um but I mean it's it's what, the other thing that's been interesting has been like the 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 clash of play styles. I know Shaki, you wanted to say something about yeah, play like, styles. Yeah, uh, like I think it's it's a really big trend in this world uh, in this world, and and we can um, we can uh, look at it uh, by by just looking at two teams in Group A, and one of them, um, G two, tried to play a different play style that they played uh, before Worlds. So in playoffs, um, G two was not a team that ever played around top lane. And suddenly, sure, you got the scrim with it, but changing a playstyle, even with scrims, like two, three weeks of scrims, is generally not enough. The playstyle is something you, you develop, right? It takes more time than that. Um, mm -hmm. So they change the playstyle, it doesn't work. And then on the other hand, for example, you have ANX. Um, they're picking comfort picks, uh, stuff that they, do, they know they do well on. They're picking, and they're playing the same style that you were seeing them play in the LCL finals and in the in the IWCQ. So they're not changing their play style. They're playing around their best picks. If you're giving them their best picks, they're going to take them. They're playing uh, with, their, with their ultimate best champions, even though they might not be meta. Some are, some aren't. 
But I think that comfort is a thing that has to be taken into account, even if it's not meta necessarily. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I think it's there's a strong argument for for uh, for uh, comfort champions, especially with these last two patches, six, I think it was six seventeen and six eighteen that have had a lot of nerfs that uh, basically just meant that the playing field was very leveled. Uh, sure, you have S tier champions. But you have a very leveled playing field, which means that comfort can trump uh, OP picks in some situations, in my opinion. I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's a good point, but it's hard to really kind of pin that on G2. Because we've only seen three th those three games, yeah, and yeah, in those sure. three games we saw, it, we saw it in the one game uh, with the Jace pick, and then a lot of pressure came topside. He did kind of flounder that pressure a little bit. Um, with the next two games, we saw him kind of like walk, like sticking back on like the the gnar and the, I think it was a trundle on this third game, which you kind of, you can just like leave alone. And I think for the most part they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, the trundle. So, so they did definitely in game one against CLG. They put put a they put a lot of pressure on the top side because they do value Jace, which has been coming out a little bit. Um, so yeah, they definitely started to play. They played towards the new meta, which was that Jace top lane, yeah. and that's something they should just go back towards their their their, their comfort stuff. picks. There. Yeah, yeah, and especially in a BO1 format. Yeah, yeah, the BO1 format I think really really can't be understated because we have to remember as well that like all the teams like Korea and NA especially have yeah. come from best of three. Uh, I think China's our best of three, isn't it, Russ? They, yeah, they were on best of two, but now that now the best of three, yeah. And yeah. EU's yeah. EU's like the only, it's only the only like no. major LMS, region. LMS. LMS also the, best of two. Yeah, yeah. But so it's it's like everyone's coming up like a best of series. There's always that time to adapt. And I think people are like one of the really important parts of best of one, and I can tell you because I used to draft for best of one, is it's yeah. all about getting the it's it's not about being like it's not about min maxing. It's not about getting the absolute most efficiency. It's just about reducing the amount of errors. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. if you could, yeah. if you make the fewest mistakes, you'll win in a best of one yeah. rather than in a best of five. It's all about how efficient you can make everything because you have time to adapt and and tailor a strategy to how that team is then and there. But because you're going in in a best of one, you're pretty blind, um, especially when, uh, you know, you're coming in off the first week. I mean, the second week, you're still kind of blind because you don't scrim the teams in your group. So you don't really know what yeah. they're playing until they bring it out on stage. So it's all about like just bringing in like the kind of the safest, least fuck up a ball strategy you can fuck up a yeah and, that's, and I the, think, like, that's the best way to do it yeah. Uh, yeah. i actually agree with you that's the best way to do it there is there yeah. is the other uh concept where you can just you can bring out something new you say oh we're going up against a team that we haven't really uh we're not really comfortable going up against right so that comes with the cheese tactics that we see a little bit yeah. um so you can bring out an entirely new strategy and throw teams off but if you're going into best one you 100 percent want to do something that you've practiced one like day in and day out if you don't do that then that's that's easily one thing you can get blamed on like after that game you're like how did we fuck up well we played a composition we've never played before or we played a composition we're just not comfortable with right we may have played it in scrims but we didn't like we don't go through that situation 100 percent of the time and we do that in regular season games so mm -hmm. that's like if you want to be able to cut that criticism out you just play what you're comfortable with and if you fuck up with that then you're like well we're just a shit we're just a bad team well yeah. <laughs> that's all we can get yep. out of it so uh, let's talk about rocks a bit because we haven't talked about rocks. So, um, Nasi, do you want to start on this because you've not spoken in a while? Yeah, um, rocks. I have no idea what they're doing. Uh, two in two, three games in a row, they've had terrible, terrible early games. Um, the first one we saw Peanut XD on the <laughs> stage where he just yeah, invades XD. a he just invades a Graves half health uh, without really uh, knowing. Like where Graves is on the map, and it feels like feels like he wasn't really communicating with his laners that he was invading. Um, going forward into the next two games, they had really risky drafts with overwhelming scaling lanes. They also didn't really um, anticipate or like respect the early game of Olaf versus Trick, nor did they expect, nor did they respect who he's early in Seoul. Which, once again, let's remember that their coach literally begged the community to find a solution to the bug in time for their game. Yeah, and yet yeah. you still let it through. You know CLG Th plays already in Thinking soul. emoji. So, I still think Rox is a good team. Because when we, because yeah. past these early game blunders, uh, I think those are really, really one-off. 
and past those, we see them playing really, really well in the mid game. Even versus CLG, if you guys remember, they had some pretty close mm -hmm. fights with the poppy flank. And so, if they can draft, if they can be respectful in draft, if they can be smarter about playing in the early game, if Peanut XD doesn't show up, um, I know it's a lot of ifs, but I feel like these are little ifs that we didn't really see in the LCK. So I'm confident that they can return back to that form pretty easily. Um, that being, so yeah, um, I, I think I, I think we can we'll see a better early game rocks this week. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see. I think for me, I don't think we saw anything. Well, there are a few mistakes that we don't usually see from rocks. But for me, Peanut is a fairly aggressive jungler. And a a aggressive, I mean, like, overly aggressive. We see his, in the playoff, in the finals, in the LCK, he actually, when he was on Hecarim, he was not playing well, right? Mm -hmm. And you can probably uh, attribute it to when he's on, like, he's a new player on stage in a big moment. He doesn't really... Uh, uh, showcase a lot of his usual strengths and maybe he's just playing way too over uh, who knows right for me i think that he i think he's a fantastic player obviously but that is just his natural uh, point he kind of reminds me of like of mlxg except yeah <laughs> he's probably gonna grow out of it but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. he, when he sees a situation he's just gonna go in and that's a that's a bit of a weakness for uh rocks but it's a strength as well yeah, I mean, it's you'd, well, you'd hope he'll grow out of it. Like, we, you never yeah. know with these with these League of Legends players. But yeah, I think for me, Rox is, is all about like, I mean, I think what Nasa said is really important that, yeah, they've had some blunders in the early game, but like, Jesus Christ, does this team close? I mean, oh my God. Like, for me, they are, they, they, they turn a gold lead into a, into a nexus faster than any other team and more efficiently than any other team. And this is including like this, inc including SKT, who has, who has a pretty okay, awesome. free group. You know, yeah. like I actually yeah, think close. that I mean I think SKT's mid game is good, uh, but yeah. I think like the way Rocks turned like I mean Smeb was doing some disgusting things like I mean he's everyone saw like the big cannon play uh, where he like single handedly just like kills an entire team and then his like I think his poppy flanks versus COG were yeah. really good like his that. TPs were super good his brush camps were I think a bit like tricky here and there but I mean they were super far behind so it's really it's really hard to pull something on that off but I think like there was some there was some fights when COG was like 5k ahead that they looked even in gold yeah. you know and that's a real testament to 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 Rox's not only like their team fighting but the coordination and the way they set it up as well and they just like blindly trust that they'll do it you know like because Smeb in a lot of that game in the early game was actually roaming from top and kind of sitting in brushes. He was like sat in the 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 red buff kind of raptor entrance to the jungle brush. He would just literally roam from top and just kind of sit in that brush, you know. And even in the laning phase, he was like TPing to the bottom lane, giving up all his lane lead. Uh, and it, well, any lane pressure he had, he would just like concede it so he could like help out on the map. And I think for me, Smeb has been playing really well. He's not had like the most amazing. Uh, impact, but I think he's been playing really well. Uh, but I think it's just like the team's kind of letting him down. Peanut especially has been letting him down. And I think mm -hmm. Curry's not had the best performance individually so far. But uh, yeah, I think one of the things that's really interesting is that so if anyone who doesn't, uh, anyone who's interested in statistics and things like that, there's this website that um, I know Riot Games use. Um, I worked with this guy last year on, on, on Fnatic. He's a really good, good guy. His name's Tim Sevenhuisen. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry, Tim, if, I, if I'm saying that wrong. But he runs a site called oracleselixir.com. And he has this thing called the... Uh, he, has, he rates teams and he has like all the stats. So all the stats you could ever want, he has it. And he has this thing called the early game rating and the mid-late rating. And you could go on his website if you're interested in how he measures it. But um, Shaka, can you bring up the graphic? Yeah, I'm trying to, but uh, it was can working. Believe in you, Shaka. Yeah, it was working before. I don't know why it's not working now. Oh. Okay, so Unlucky. basically, so. Oh, okay. If anyone, if anyone's interested, um, they can just go to um, oracleselixir.com. I'm actually going to link it in Twitch chat right now. Oracleselixir. Dot com. So shout out to Oracle's Elixir. Um, if you go to that, yeah. there's you can actually go to the the Worlds tab, and um, you can see there's like EGR and MLR. I think uh, the yeah. tag, that stands for Early Game Rating and Mid Late Rating. He actually rates the teams, and I think it's like I think there are a couple of things here and there that are like not so great about it. Like I wouldn't put SKT's early game so high, um, mostly because I think their group is like super free. Yeah, obviously. Um, and I. I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. You need to I agree, but 
We'll probably get into that. You, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 interesting food for thought. Yeah. So yeah. this is the percentage of of a team uh, winning a game uh, at 15 minutes, uh, taking into account their leads and how they're doing in the first 15 minutes. And if you look carefully, uh, Rox is uh, pretty much at the bottom. And if you consider that. Uh, INTZ, Splice, and IMA are all 1-2 and two in, or 0-3 oh, teams. Um, Rox, is, Rox is down there with a 2-1 and, oh, and one rating, so it's, it's pretty yeah. bad. It's pretty bad at yeah. the moment for them. Right, let's, uh, let's move on. I think we've, we've spoken a lot about this group. So uh, does anyone have anything they want to say about this group before we move on to predictions? Ooh, uh, no. I think we pretty much touched, or at least I... I think we've I've touched on just about everything I wanted to. Okay, let's uh, let's go into predictions. And so, NASA, I want to start with you because I think you've not said said anything in a while. So, what's your what's your predictions of this group? What do you expect, and who do you think is going to make it out? I think Rocks will go three zero. They will fix some of their draft issues. I know Gorilla has spoken about their draft, and so I think they're going to work on it. Mm -hmm. I think they will. I think because they will be more respectful in draft, that will translate to a better early game because they won't be picking, you know, triple scaling lanes. And so I think Rocks will go 3-0. I think CLG will come out in second. Um, and then I'll probably say maybe ANX will still come out in third because G2 won't win a game. But it, I mean two games. But even if they win a game, G2 will still be in fourth. So, so let's do that then. Let's do Tigers first, CLG second, uh, yeah, ANX in that, I think. third, yeah, and uh, G2 and fourth. Like, what, third and fourth will be interchangeable. And the reason I don't yeah. think ANX will come out of this group is because their, their wins were really reliant on uh, Baron steals, or sneaky Barons, should I say. Um, if, you look at their, if, you're, if you look at their gold graph, like, there are other things. But let's if you look at yeah, the gold yeah. graph, both mm -hmm. games, gold lead was were relatively relatively tied. Once they snuck those barons, uh, that's when they knew how to like take over the game and close out the game. So maybe I am underestimating them, but I want to see them uh, win games without those sneaky barons because I think teams will now be prepared for that. It's because it's not something you can do every single game. Mm -hmm. So yep. I, I just wanted to mention that point. I think I think that the schedule is really important. So um, schedule is on your screen right now. Um, and I think it's important to mention that ANX's last game is against G2. Now, and G2's first game today is going to be Rocks. So if G2 lose against, uh, against Rocks, they might be already out. Depending on then the other results, right? That's actually true. Yeah, so, ANX would get a free win because G2 so, might just troll. Yeah, so what I mean yeah. is a ANX might get to their last match of the day with their opponents already knowing that they're out of the out of contention for making it out of group stages. Because technically obviously a team that won zero three can still can still make it out of groups, but when, when you go zero four, the only real way that you can do it is if you have a, a three way tiebreaker in as a two two four, two four, two four, right? So yeah. they might get yeah. to that stage of the last game of the day where G two is already out. And they don't take the game as seriously. And it's a bit like the situation last year where CLG played Pain. Um, obviously, that that uh, victory was obviously deserved by Pain, but CLG weren't like fully committed to that game as they were before. You know, like there's yeah. there's no denying that. Um, and, there's... and it might happen again. Yeah. And if it happens again, uh, I can see ANX with a real chance of of going to a tiebreaker with CL with CLG. Sure. So I think that's would you, would you take ANX to take that tiebreaker day? Mm. That's the question. You know, it's yeah. like Ooh, I, see, I, I there just we go. see. I don't see it. Like, see, my prediction is that I think Rox is going to win because I think they're just too good a team. And even if they fall behind early, I think they're too good in the mid game that I think anybody's going to be able to close it out reliably. I think at worst they'll go for a tiebreaker for first, and I think they'll still win because the more times you get to prepare, I think the more it favors Rox because they just have such sheer scale across the board. Um. So that's basically my prediction for Rocks, and I think definitely COG is going to make it out second, mostly because I think a large part of like um, ANX's wins were um, because they ended up on Comfort Champs. You know, they mm -hmm. had 
the like the Nivea brand game where I mean G2 was basically trolling. Like Perks especially was trolling. Like I don't know what the hell he was doing in that mid lane matchup, but he was definitely not like not playing the way he no, he was not playing the way he plays in Europe, or at least if he was, and it's anyway. That's like a whole different yeah, thing. Yeah, I, like I just packs. wanted to mention yeah. specifically that when I was yeah, saying the like, three-way tie for two and four, I was speaking in general in groups. For this group, it's not yeah. possible anymore. So it, it might as well. It might have all just happened that G two gets to the last game of the day, and they're out of contention for groups. So sure. I think so, that's really important to mention. I think that Rocks win all three games. They go five and one, and. Depending on it, since Rock, since I predict Rock, Rocks to beat G two, G two will be pretty much out of contention. And once they get to that ANX Same. game, they might drop it to ANX, and then I see ANX and uh, CLG going to the tiebreaker. And CLG, the same, man. CLG take it. That's my ah, prediction. there we go. Oh, Finally, ah. You yeah. think ANX? CLG hype. There we go. Right, give it <laughs> no, to no, us. No, no, I just wanted you to say CLG. <laughs> I just wanted you to sip on the CLG train. I, I actually think CLG is coming out too for another reason. So, like, pretty much I already just said it. I think it's going to be Rocks and CLG. The reason why is simply because that uh, Elmas Knox, even though they're a team that they've shown themselves a lot of strength in terms of grouping and taking team fights, they're a really strong team fighting team due in part to, um, I would say, Lacrit. Even af even off of Comfort Champions, if he's on Tom Kench, if he's on Bard, is technically still his t Comfort Champion. He hasn't showed it so yeah, far, yeah, but like I, I no, he did. He it's like it. one of those things. Yes. Okay. That's good. Yeah, he played it. So he has another. So for me, at the very. I was gonna say he, had a, he, has, he has another, another Comfort Champion. We might. See oh yeah, he just. He has. He has, yeah, he just has a lot. He might. Oh we, we right, might see yeah. Oh yeah. He, why hasn't he played? Yeah, his Tarek's pretty good. So for me, at the very least, just to make a, a good point about this is that I think the reason they lose is not so much in their champion pools. I think the reason they lose is simply because their their style does not do well against CLG. Uh, they may have beaten CLG, but I think uh, CLG is a team that they actually can play flanks fairly well, and they can play 131 fairly well. And, then, sure. and going up against... Um, Albus Knox, they're a really great grouping team. They group really well, in part due to to a miracle playing a lot of Jin and uh, Ash. He's played Lucian, which is actually really surprising. But even on this Lucian play, he still groups with the team. So they actually just stick around as a five-man team, roaming from place to place to place to place. And if CLG actually goes to their strengths here, like I'm not too sure. Obviously, regardless of their picks, they can go to Aurelian Sol and just say, you know, fuck it, we'll just group two. But they have shown that. The, the ability to uh, uh, play one three ones incredibly well and flank really well, yeah. so their team fight prowess is strong. So I, I just mm -hmm. I think they. Super, really well. Yeah, I just wanted to mention super quick that ANX's first game is CLG. So Ooh, if I'm ANX, go. if I'm ANX, I go hard in. I go hard on this yeah. game because if you two O CLG, you win the tiebreaker. Yeah, but hey, you know what? Also when... go hard. So it's like yeah, 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 it's, it's yeah, gonna yeah. go both ways. Yeah. yeah. But if you're ANX, when you has really ANX gone hard, though? yeah. But if you want, if you're ANX, you really want this win, this first win of the day. So yeah, that's. But yeah, my predictions okay. stay the same. Let's uh, right. Let's move on. So Group B is obviously the SKT and or at least it feels it's SKT and everyone else. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of how I feel about this uh, so far. So I'm gonna open this up with the. Uh, uh, Shaka, you can go first for Group B. So, what's your what's your thoughts on Group B? Uh, I was gonna say, shouldn't we do? Uh, are we going A B C D? Uh, because yeah. like, uh, I was gonna ask. I know. Because of I know the schedule, schedule is. I know the schedule is <laughs> A C D B, which make. By the way, Lolly Sports makes no fucking sense. Like <laughs> everything's in order except B is just randomly on the end. That doesn't make any sense. We're gonna go A B C D. Oh, because of the yeah. schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. at, at, at Warroom Esports, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> like things make sense. There is logic and there is reasoning, and we follow like that train of well, thought most of the time. Most of the time, thanks. Yeah, most of the time. No, no guarantee on that. You don't get your money back, I'm afraid. But yeah, we're going to go A, B, C, D because this makes sense. So Group B, Shaka, take it away, Group B. SKT and everybody else. And shout out to Flash Wolves. Yeah, so um, I think everyone in this in this uh, call has uh, quite the gripe with, with Flash Wolves, right? They're, they're really a team that, it, that has impressed me both positively and negatively. I've talked about this in other episodes. Impressed you negatively. Oh, well, surprised me negatively. That's sorry, bad. sorry. I, 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 yeah, well, actually, impressed me uh, negatively is actually a really good term to describe them. That is a good one. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, I actually do. <laughs> but yeah, um, like the thing about Flash Wolves is they, they surprised me because they, I, I think they're the best early game team in the tournament so far. 
they've had the cleanest early games. But then, as you, you you mentioned in your video, as we all see seen, they, they just get the mid game and it's just like they're lost, right? Um, yeah. My hope, personal hope, is that they can fix it coming into week two. They they went and saw VOD reviews and saw maybe this we shouldn't be quick pushing this wave. We should be stacking this wave so we can we can uh, do a four one and get a teleport flank, uh, especially in some games if if. Uh, if what's his name MMD is like on a poppy or something, you know they can do something like that. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping they prep well for this week too, because if they prep and if they fix if they fix these problems, I think they're 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 the second team coming out of this group, right? Um, so it's it's really for me obviously the toss up between Cloud9 and, and Flash Wolves. Obviously Flash Wolves have the disadvantage that they unfortunately lost to IME. So uh, C9 is, is ahead of them. C, uh, C9 is ahead of them and only really needs to, like if C9 beats Slash Wolves, it's over, right? So in that sense, I guess I'm going to put C9 coming out second uh, just because they already have the head-to-head -head, um, advantage and it's harder for Flash Wolves to come out. But I'm hopeful that we can see a Flash Wolves that fix their problems and, and comes into Week 2 as a strong team because I think... Even though they have, they don't have the stronger player, uh, they stronger team player by player. They're they're really organizing that early game, and that's really something I love to see. Is when a team is really cohesive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of flash holes on their early game, oh. uh, as we kind of mentioned, like their mid game is really hard. Even though they have, I would say the best early game, maybe tied with TSM, their mid game is just something that has been an issue even in their LMS playoffs run versus AHQ in particular. Um, so I don't think this is something that they can fix and when we go like uh, mid-game macro is actually really hard to get nailed down. And if you don't have it yeah. at this point, uh, mid-tournament, mid I don't know if it's going to uh, magically fix itself, which is why I'm leaning towards C9. Uh, especially as you said, Shaka, they did lose to Aime. So they have a poor record going into week two. The other thing is that even in their win versus SKT, um, I think they won that game because Faker was playing too, too disrespectful. Um, with And they had that early in pick, which seems to be, might become like the, the best pick uh, tied with Syndra or maybe better than Syndra, to be honest, because of that roaming potential. Yeah. So we'll have to see what Flash Wolves can come up with, and also how their other opponents will play. But it, I, it's hard for me to be optimistic about this team, especially considering they went 1-2 in the first week. Yeah. I don't, I just don't know if they can uh, get it together enough. Because even, yeah, uh, sorry, I missed, I forgot my point. Because even in their win versus SKT, the, their mid-game was good, but not as sharp as someone like Rox, like CLG, um, like RNG, etc., um, so I don't know. We we will see. But I'm I I want them to go through because I really love their early game and I really love some of their players. But yeah. it's just hard to, for me to argue that they will. Yeah. So the way I would say it is, I think the um, it's going to be SKT obviously and C9, and which is going to be surprising because I actually think that Flash Wolves, of course, theoretically everyone's going to say the same should be out of groups. And if you like look to a very a, a Big, a specific for Flash Wolves that I think is actually really problematic in their mid game is that even in their game against SKT, they stall out their own game with their lane assignments. I think their lane assignments are just atrocious. I think when it comes to the mid game, they usually find a way to not try and when they actually try to approach that mid lane tower, they try to siege it front to back than ever trying to force a dive onto it. Right? Rather than forcing a dive, just try and force them off by like tip, getting an angle. They actually just they. The way I'd like to put it is that they they don't know what they're setting up for. Their their setup is incredible. Like whenever I watch their setups for for Baron, it's spot on, right? Whenever I watch their setup for uh, for that dive in mid, like just or just jungle setup in general, it's like yeah. they they know how to do it, but they don't know what they're doing it for. So whenever they get to that point, it just falls flat, and so that's it's frustrating simply because they have. Like they, it's like okay, uh, I'm looking at the equation. It's a uh, one plus two. No, it's like one plus blank equals three. And you're like, you have the answer. You have <laughs> like, you just need to fill in that one little bit of uh, the equation. You just got nothing. They they show yeah. nothing. And so that's kind of that's really frustrating. 
And I don't think, A, yeah, sure, they're far behind uh, in terms of the actual, right now they're one and two in the groups. But at the same time, I think that C9 just has that better. So, mm. so uh, let's talk about SKT for a bit because we, we spent some time on Flash Jewels. And obviously, SKT is the big group in the, uh, sorry, the big team in this group. So yeah. for me, like the big thing that I've seen about SKT, and I, I, I promise people I talk about this is Faker. I honestly don't think Faker is looking good at all. Like, no. so the way that the game, like, so Faker individually, I still think is the best player in the world. I think in terms of mm -hmm. pure individual talent, like who can get the most out of his, his champion, I guess you could put, call it like mechanics or whatever, but like in terms of like how to individually, like if you were to put like a 1v1 tournament or whatever and actually have it pure 1v1, not with the like the bullshit 1v1 rules or whatever, I'm pretty sure yeah. Faker would come out uh, as the victor. I think like Smeb is definitely the most effective player in the world right now in terms of how he can like, it, his, his, he is more likely to have a team win with him on the team than Faker is. And I actually think right now Faker is more likely to lose than he is to win because against a good team, the way Faker plays is super greedy. So in two games, um, I watched it like, but, and I, it didn't happen versus C9, but that was because he just shit stomped Jensen super hard. But basically what happened in both the games is whenever there was like an opportunity to invade the enemy, like basically the, the theme of the world, the theme of words right now is like shooting out enemy junglers. It's getting inside the enemy jungle, coordinating your mid with your support and your jungler together and kind of going in and taking enemy jungle camps. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, so what happens now is like mid lane is when they get control of the mid lane through like a better trade or a better matchup or whatever, whenever they have control over the mid lane, what they do is they push it with the jungler and then they go inside the enemy jungle but what faker's doing is whenever he gets control of mid lane he freezes and tries to zone off the enemy mid laner and tries to yeah. accumulate a 1v1 cs lead so what happens is blank is like inside the enemy jungle which in my opinion is sometimes actually the right decision i think um mm -hmm. i think actually blank's not playing as bad as maybe people think he is i think blank's been getting a bit of a bad rap and i think fake has been letting him out to dry i think there's been some times where there's been some decent invade opportunities for skt and blank's taking them but fake is just not following up fake is too busy freezing his lane um and there's been like times where like skt has been punished i think that early game is looking super weak because fake is so busy trying to get this 1v1 cs lead and this 1v1 like he's not even like taking taking towers and stuff so i just don't understand what he's trying to do because mm -hmm. you because unless like unless you're gonna go up against jensen who's gonna feed you kills because he's so busy he's also trying to be that 1v1 guard <laughs> like it's just not gonna happen so like faker for me is actually a huge disappointment and i think maybe blank's got a bit of a bad rap i, I mean, mean what, what I do you think about i would call stuff? i wouldn't call it like he's a disappointment um I, w I wouldn't even go f as far as to say he gets the Dade award. Uh, it's just that this is something we've seen of Faker for his whole career is that he needs a jungler that just babysits him so that he can cover him when he's going for these aggressive trades and make sure the enemy jungler doesn't just show up and 2v1 him. Mm -hmm. um, like the, this is a pa I don't I I wouldn't say it's a disappointment. It's something I expected. I didn't think that they would end up. Um, you know, fixing that mid jungle situation and for Faker to not play so heavily focused on that 1v1 trade and on that, like, getting that CS lead. So for sure, me, it's not really can, disappointed. Can I, can I follow up a yeah. second? Like, yeah. at, at what point do we start saying, like, this is his style? And at what point do we start just going, well, is he actually just playing badly? Because in my opinion, the way the way the game is looking, like the meta is really obvious, and you know a team like SKT can read the meta and look at like this is how the game mm -hmm. is supposed to be played. And at what point yeah. do you just go, okay, this is this is no longer just being selfish and being a playstyle, and just you are just not playing as efficiently as you can, and that is by definition a mistake. Yeah, because so, you know he can let, play let, that let, way. It's sorry, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Let's contrast them to let's contrast them to like perks. Perks is playing badly, but he's also bad. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's, pl he's playing lane bad, he's making fair. bad. Yeah. He, uh, Faker is good, but he's playing the game badly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he's not, uh, like you said, he's not playing the game that we think, or, you know, many analysts say that the game should be played right now, which is playing around your jungler, playing around where the enemy jungler is and what he's doing, and then playing to try to get these advantages in the enemy jungle rather than specifically in lane, which is what seems to be what Faker is focused on. Lane, lane, lane. Um, I, I was just going to ask, so is this a case where um, does Faker really need to adapt? Or can the team play a different style and just get away with it? 
Because I how think, deep do you uh, want to yeah. go in this tournament? Because I think they can. Uh, may, maybe they don't go as they don't go as deep, but like I, I don't know. I, I can see Faker like first off Faker playing with. Um, actually, statistically, he he plays mid better. He has better advantages mid with blank, which is weird because you usually associate uh, Bengi uh, as the the guy that really helps out Faker. But um, I don't know. I, I think it's really a situation where if they if they play a different style and it might not be meta, they might be able to get away with it even with better teams. That it it really depends on yeah. the matchups he gets, but. I think if he if he gets a pushing advantage, if he gets like, uh, not even a pushing advantage, but if he gets like a favorable matchup where he can he can solo kill or or given advantages he can solo kill or with ganks he can easily snowball a matchup, I think it's worth playing for because it's faker, you know, specifically because it's faker. I might be wrong. Well, that just comes. But, I mean, yeah, I see a point. I'll let Ras follow up. Yeah, go on. Yeah. For me, that just comes down to what the, the coach or the team decides, right? Because you can't yeah. be trying to do two things at the same time. Yeah. For me, it kind of reminds me of Cloud9. Cloud9 coming into this tournament, they're a fairly unique team because they just play around Jensen, right? That's their style. It kind of reminds me of Invictus Gaming. You have Rookie and literally Kid just walk, makes circles around the lane, right? That's all he does uh, for the most part. And so it's viable. You can do that. It may not be the meta, and the meta is just simply playing towards your jungle so your jungle can create plays or just, like, walk in and get those invades down. Like, that's what is fairly successful right now in the meta. But the meta is essentially what you make of it, and you can play around strong lanes. And if SKT sure. wants to play around just, like, uh, having um, a blank play the Bengi strat, which is just set up your lanes to succeed and then use your lanes to win the game, right, that's viable. Um, but if they're doing both things at the same time, that's a problem. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, move on to C9 and I Yeah, I, just I think we should to, go to... I just wanted to, to complete something that Raz mentioned just about styles. Uh, and since we're mentioning C9, just segue into that. Um, C9, as, as Raz mentioned, likes to play a lot of, around uh, Jensen. But we saw it against uh, uh, on the I game. Um, I don't know if you if you had any chance to rewatch that, but if I recall correctly, Meteos actually played more around top. And yeah, they changed their style. Yeah, they changed yeah. their style, and in, in that case, like I, I think it's the more correct approach. And I, I I think if the team, depending on matchup, I think the team can play the two approaches as long as it's uh, defined in pregame uh, and in draft. I think it's really important. One thing that. I noticed some teams, they seem lost because maybe it, there wasn't enough discussion coming into the draft. And after the draft, like after the draft, you have like, what, 30 seconds where the coach needs to say or, or the and the players need to agree. And it all needs to be uh, organized where they say, we're going to play around this lane. And I, I think it can work, you know, like with C9, with C9, sure, they play around Jensen a lot. But let's say they, they have the really good advantage for, for impact. They can say, like, we're going to play around impact this game, and we're going to have impact, like, get an advantage and start uh, split pushing and, and drawing pressure towards the side lane. And that's something that really works well because it's 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 something that impact knows how to do super well. And we saw it versus Flash Wolves, and we saw how he, what we could what he could do with an advantage against side lane. Okay. And I actually agree with that. It's just it's easier said than done, right? Because yeah, of course, there of course. we had that we had that point uh, earlier in this in the show where it's if you don't play towards that stuff for the season and the playoffs and you go and you and you decide, okay, yeah, you have that quick thirty second discussion with your team, this is what the plan is, be aware of it. You get into the game and of course the team will play generally towards what they're comfortable with. So yeah, yeah I agree with you in principle. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's move on to to Aime because we touched a bit on Aime then. So uh, now, so what's your thoughts on Aime? How do, how do you see them uh, shaking out in this group? Uh, I mean, like we talked, like when we when we did episode one and previewed Aime, we talked about how they are another team that doesn't play, you know, to their jungler around their jungler. They like to play around their lane, specifically their top and mid lane. And that hasn't really worked out for them. They've been going for comfort picks and draft. You know, we even saw like Echo Top, which hasn't been played at all uh, by any of the other teams, I believe. And so they're sticking to their comfort and they're trying to play the way they know how to play, which is have a voidless uh, gank mid or top. But it's just not working and it's just not good enough for the international stage. 
I think. Do you think they go 0-3 this week? Uh, I mean, if they face Flash Wolves and Flash Wolves give them a good scaling comp and they once again they don't close against them in the mid game uh, and allow Ime to scale because what we know Ime is good at is they're really good at skirmishing mm -hmm. and uh, team fighting in the late game, uh, especially when you have like TP flanks uh, of that sort. They really know how to um, prioritize picks, prioritize uh, the carries and fights. Um, so if they get to that point versus Flash Hills, uh with a good scaling comp, I think I can see them do well there and get a win, at least. So my take on on uh, IMA is is very much that I think that what are the th sort of things that we thought we might see from IMA we are definitely seeing. I think uh, Avoidless is like he's kind of doing some of the things he does. Uh, and some of it's going pretty well, but a lot of what we're seeing is he kind of is kind of falling behind. Like versus SKT, like at one point Blank was 41 CS to avoid us as 19. He was like literally double his creeps. Jesus. And then you know, in it like versus Flash Wolves, we saw him like take this really bad invade because uh, Flash Wolves had like invaded his buff, and then he tried to go take. Uh, like he tried to respond and take the enemy, enemy buff, but had no lane pressure. So there's like questions for me about like can avoidless play in this meta because what we saw from avoidless he's very good at doing that creative pathing but i think like if he gets called out on it and it's because it's basically a coin flip at the end of the day you know it's like you're going in and you're kind of going i expect you to do this pathing so i'm going to do this pathing to carry it but if he doesn't do that pathing then you can kind of fuck yourself because you're taking an inefficient route to yeah. kind of call out the enemy jungler so there's maybe a bit of that i think maybe avoidless is being exposed as maybe not as quite as deep a player um so i think um one of the, one of the issues I also have with with um, with Ime is that I think their mid game is really weak. So one of the things I saw that I think that SKT does really well is when they're behind, and we saw this versus Flash Wolves, um, is um, SKT fight for everything. You know, like if you're invading on their buff, like it doesn't matter if you're 5k ahead, they're gonna fight you for it. They fight you for the vision. They fight you for control. Like every, you can't skip steps versus SKT. What they you like if you want to like take control of a particular area of the map like they will fight you for it and you have to put in all the steps properly otherwise they'll punish you for it and they'll catch you out or they'll clear your vision or they'll you know take the buff away from you you'll be able to steal it like and this is something that IMA doesn't do one of the things that i saw from IMA was that they just roll over and die you know and a large part of this comes from i think their poor wave control uh more than three times i didn't get the exact number of how many times i saw it um but more than three times i saw amazing j group and like duke would just get like gifted like a fat wave you know they don't crash yeah. the wave they would just like randomly slow push it and it'd be like a wave and a half not even a stacked wave it would just be like a wave and a half and you know they would just give this to duke you know or um i think the way that uh Oh, the AD carry. What's the AD carry's name? Sorry. Jin Zhao. Yeah, Jin Zhao. Yeah. yeah, like he gets it's absolutely fucked sometimes. Like they just like leave him for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And he just gets like, it, like his day is just ruined. And I think that. That's his life, dude. Yeah, that's, I that's think. That's his life. Always. Yeah, I'm as a team. I'm as a team. It strikes me as a team with very specific strengths. And when they can work in a meta, I think that they, they could be a decent team, maybe like an upset team in groups. But I think the way the meta is right now, because it's so jungle focused, and um, I think. Now they're playing against substantially better competition. Like that sounds kind of weird because they did okay in LPO, and LPO is not like a weak region. Um, but I think now they're kind of being exposed as as a team that kind of just is not as complete as they need to be to compete in the world stage. Yeah, I, I mean, like you were mentioning, Jin Zhao, Ro just turns to Jin Zhao and says, "Go die," and he goes, "Ro," and he just like, "Ooh, that's too <laughs> soon, Checker. That's that's too Oof. soon." So, uh, Raz, you're a, you're a resident LPL expert. Yes. Give us a lowdown on, on IMA. How do, how do you see this team shaking out? It's really funny that the team isn't really... Their style changes a lot. So just as a quick point is that they used to be a very early to mid-game focused team, right? They used to sure. play that Thresh, Twisted Fate. Uh, uh, I was about to say Jin Zhao. It's Jin. So he plays Jin a lot. <laughs> he used to play Jin a lot. And so... Uh, they used to play a very early game, mid game focused like composition, and they used to be that one mindset team. If they didn't get off early, they're yeah. done. And so they changed obviously, yeah. and they become a lot more con controlled. And then now it just seems like their compositions are a lot more. There's a hell of a lot less wave clear, except for that one game where they ran uh, Varus up against 
um, Splash Wolves. Splash, Splash Wolves. Wolves. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they they played that. They're just playing incredibly scaling compositions towards team fighting, and that's that's fine because they do team fight fairly well. Mm-hmm. The problem is that, as you said, their their control and their setup to get to that point is fairly reactive. It's always reactive. They wait for the enemy yeah. team to mess up, and then they go to that play. So they, so it's a change that I do not like from uh, from uh, IMA because they are usually the team that takes initiative that they play. Uh, or at least Road is a player that goes towards Bard. He goes towards Alistar. He pl- he's the primary playmaker. Mm. And as much as I do like the concept that as their season went on, they were playing a more control style. They were trying to make it so they weren't completely reliant on Road playing that uh, heavy engaged style to set up every play that they make, right? And it doesn't help that Gragas is out of the meta because that was like a voidless's... Uh, uh, ability to engage, to be that primary role, right? Mm. I think that's I how know a lot that of you don't... Was actually. So that's why. Do yeah. you think that's why he took took up the Zach a lot? Yeah. So that's a hundred percent. I think so because uh, if he kind of had to back away from, I think he has to because if you're playing Zach in this meta without like a jungle pressure, you need strong lanes, and you cannot con- you can't control that every game, right? Yeah. That's just something that you can't simply cannot do. So. But I think that's why uh, he's for... going to Zach. Mm-hmm. It's like his replacement yeah. for for Gargus, right? Yeah. So, overall, just as a quick point, I think IMA is like, yeah, the meta doesn't suit them, and they're a team that's also learning. They're on the stage to learn. They're not on the stage to really comp. I don't want to say they're not on the stage to compete, but they simply are not at the level right now. So, uh, sure. yeah, that's a big point for me. Okay. So let's let's move it on to C9, the last the last uh, team in this group. So Shaka, I want to open with you, and then uh, you've given your predictions, but just give us like a quick. You know, like one minute overview of how you see C9, because you've already given us your predictions. So I'll start with you. Yeah, I see C9 as this team that uh, I, I won't say they struggle with an identity, but I, I think that they have these two identities, and I, I feel like they need to adopt to, to lean towards one of them more than the other. Um, mm-hmm. In the sense, in the sense that I think Jensen needs to understand that. Um, like him getting solo kills or getting kills with ganks isn't really priority. Um, and like if you're putting on a pushing matchup and he, he helps uh, Medios instead of Medios helping him, because it's, it's kind of reverse right now, uh, they can play towards top side and they can even play towards bot side like, mm-hmm. um, and, and actually get larger advantages. And I think that C9 as a team needs to realize that they should play more around impact and less around Jensen. I think that's the big thing to take away. Um, I'm also going to pull up a uh, schedule here for 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 their, their group, so we can talk about that a bit. Um, okay, so... Yeah, yeah. Go, on, go on. I just want to actually follow up on that. One mm-hmm. big point for me is that I actually generally agree with that in principle because you know, impact is a player that has been showing up quite a bit, right? Yeah. Even in these... Even in these disastrous games that have been coming in worlds for them uh, up against Flash Wolves, he was that one shining light. I still do believe that they should actually be playing towards Jensen because you should, hmm. while they should have been putting practice in going into worlds, just as a quick point, going into worlds, I thought C9 had a very exploitable weakness, right? In terms of, sure, Impact is playing super well and he's eating up so much pressure, right? In a lot of those situations, he was eating up pressure. You look at the rest of the map. The C9 was not really in position to get anything off of it. So the fact that Impact survived in those situations, you're like, okay, that's beautiful. But if you didn't, that's just a free kill. That's a free pick, right? And that should have been a free pick because they just misexecuted or, or Impact makes an amazing play in that regard. So mm-hmm. um, I thought that C9 going into Worlds was, it's an exploitable weakness, but at the same time, their strength around mid lane is an identity that C9 has always had where they, they are so good at controlling that lane. And not only just Meteos being by his side, but Smoothie always looking to rotate as well, and their pick control has always been on spot on, so I think that if that's something that they're comfortable with, historically, they should continue to do that and just perfect it, rather than trying to play a style with theoretically should be like a, a great idea, right? But mm-hmm. it's something that they're not really... It might not be worth of an effort in that uh, build-up time for world. So, so I actually agree that I think I think that's what C9 should play towards mid. So, so a bit like the, the Faker situation. In a sense, yeah. yeah. I actually, I actually want to make that comparison because a lot of people have been saying that, like, oh, Bjergsen's the NA faker. And I think what they actually mean is like Bjergsen is like the greatest of all time mid laner. 
of NA. But I actually think that a better a better analogy would be that I think Jensen is actually the NA faker. I think Bjergsen yeah. is. I think Faker is, is so one dimensional now. Like before, like a couple of seasons ago, like even last season, it definitely worked playing that way. But I think like unless Faker starts diversifying, like he's going to become, he's going to end up being that kind of one dimensional. Oh, did we plant out of his one? Oh, oh he's <laughs> back. Yeah, you're back. No, we're, we're good. We're good. You're good. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, my bad. So yeah, I just wanted to say that like, I think that Jensen has looked very much like the way Faker plays, you know, he's really, mm. he's, he's very one dimensional, very, very lane focused, very, you know, all about a kind of his 1v1 lead. Um, but for me, I think, I think actually, like I'm going to get to the point now, uh, and you can kind of use this as a tagline, whatever, but I think calling Bjergsen the NA Faker is actually an insult to Bjergsen. I think Bjergsen is so versatile and so focused on getting his team ahead and translating his lead to, to helping his lanes rather than kind of turning it just on himself. Like, don't get me wrong. Bjergsen will get solo kills, and we've seen that this tournament, but that's not what he's aiming for, you know? He will exploit a mistake to get the solo kill, but he doesn't force it to the point where he becomes a liability for his team. I think that Jensen is is a, is a more apt uh, person for the title of, yeah. of NA Faker for that reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, like, I actually kind of disagree with you Raz. I think I would I would like to see more of C9 playing around in fact because I actually watched the C9 IMA again at uh, IMA game again and I think one of the one of the thing there's a couple of things that did really well that I'd like to see more of. So number one obviously they play around impact because impact can create a lead but uh, yeah. on its own which is what we saw in the NA playoffs. But what I really liked about that is that like it's it's all well and good having impact just create a lead on his own. He is a good enough player to do that. You know the guards are world champion. Mm -hmm. He is a fantastic top laner. One of the best at the tournament yeah. for sure. But What's really good is you can manufacture that lead artificially by putting pressure in that lane and assigning resources to that lane. You know, giving him ganks, giving him vision, you know, giving mm. him that freedom to pressure that lane and really create more of an advantage because you know he will snowball it. You know, like there's not many laners who could snowball leads in this tournament. And he is definitely one of them. And one thing I really liked as well is they put Smoothie on a playmaker. I really liked him on Alistair. I think he was much better on Alistair than he was in his range supports. I don't know if that's because of the dynamic in the bottom lane or whatever, but he was doing some sick moves. You know, he was in top lane at five minutes. He was making plays. He was diving towers. c looked super decisive. And I liked that they just left Jensen on an island to create pressure 1v1 and use that for medias to invade and room to top side. I think that was really good. So my prediction for Group B um, is that I think that SKT will make it out just because of the way they, they have the lead and they're just too good a team. I think Flash will stylistically is the only team that can beat them, uh, but I do think that's enough for Flash was to make it out. Though maybe they get a free win there or something and maybe that mm -hmm. shakes the group up a bit, but I actually think that C9 will take it out because I I have faith in the way C9 has adapted from game to game. I think they're going to continue that adaptation. I think they're going to improve and I think they're going to show us something good in week two. At least I hope so. Um, so mm -hmm. I think SKT is going to come out first, uh, C9 is going to come out second, and the rest of it actually doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I just wanted okay. to mention schedule being really important here because it's, I mean, it's likely that Flash will beat IMA, right? I mean, even yep. though, like, let's say Flash will beat IMA and SKT beat C9. Uh, the, ga the, the two teams, Flash Wolves and C9, go into their match head-to-head -head with the same record. So that game is extremely important for Flash Wolves mm -hmm. because if they lose that, they're pretty much out. Yeah, they're pretty much out if they lose that because then they're 0-2 they're, uh, versus C9. So the, the day might be decided really early on in that group. Yeah, I think, I think if they lose any game, unless if it's to... Well, yeah, no, I think no, they, because if they, if they, they, if they lose, to IMA, probably. if they lose to yeah. IMA and then like win the other two games, they can make it, you know. Yeah, that's but true. That's if a they good lose point. versus C9, it's over. Yeah, unless okay, unless C9 is dropping all game, all the other games. But yeah. Right. Let's yeah. uh let's move on to uh, to Nasa. Sorry, I keep mispronouncing uh, that name. Looking at those ranks of the schedule. Nasher. <laughs> Baron Nasser. Um, I think that Flash Wolves might have a chance just because the end is playing SKT and then Flash Wolves straight after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they won't but even my, get off stage. My gut still tells me SKT first, yeah, C9 yeah. second. Mm -hmm. But I really want Flash Wolves to go through just because yeah. I what I hope is that Flash Wolves end up second or first, but second and then TSM first, and then they get drawn into the same bracket. Oh, or, what like, a game! It, and I really want to watch that early game, you know, battle. Like, oh, that would be just beautiful. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but I will go with my gut, which tells me SKT first, C9 second, Flash Wolves third, 
um, I'm a fourth. We might even see a tiebreak hearts. Yeah, we might even see a tiebreaker between Flash Wolves and C9. Sure. If it gets to a tiebreaker, I can see Flash Wolves winning that. Yeah, I would Actually, say Flash Wolves. I agree that with tiebreaker. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so uh, ignoring any shenanigans with Flash Wolves 2 owing SKT or something, uh, I think we all pretty much agree on Group B. So let's move on to Group C. So Group C, I think, has been the most disappointing group in terms of level of gameplay. I don't know if you guys agree. Um, actually, at NASA, let's open with you. What, what, what is your thoughts on Group C? Oh, Group C. Mm, I tell you, the first day pretty much went all as expected. Um, the ITC only thing EDG? that... E I ITC guess... beat EDG on the first day. There's no way you expected that. I'm, I'm calling yeah, it. Yeah, saying that. Sorry. I, 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 I'm outside of the first day. I said outside of the first oh, day. Oh, sorry. Outside okay, of the first okay. day. Okay. Yeah, all sure. Right. That, that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, that's fair. The only thing that I disappointed about and uh, is HDK going going one two in the first week. Once again, I put my faith in this team into Yankos into Forgiven, and mm -hmm. I end up getting disappointed. But maybe they can turn around week two. As for like what's happening week one, I guess we can start with let's start with INTZ because um, I think I I don't know. I feel like they're a team that. Is is good in some areas, but they need a lot more in terms of draft, in terms of uh, individual level. It seems like individually, either they're underperforming or they're just not as good as their wildcard counterparts uh, from ANX. And I think maybe that's what's hurting them the most is just that individually they are not up to snuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think the bot lane is really bot lane is. It's just like they were not performing this poorly in Brazil or in other seasons because Joxer and Macau have lain together for quite a while. Um, but they were not a strong bot lane. Like if you ask most pros in Brazil, they wouldn't tell you that Joxer and Macau were the better bot lane. They would tell you like Eza and all this, like Bayano, which was one of the supports he had, or like even Payne's bot lane. Uh, CNB's bot lane actually played pretty decently during the season. So these guys are not the best bot lane in their region. Not even close. Um, Mikau is a good team fighter, in my opinion. He he learned how to fix... He had this problem where he'd flash forward a lot. Uh, kind of like... Uh, who was it that did that? Was it Pinoy? Yeah, kind of like Pinoy. Uh, but yeah, um, this team... Like, what I'd like to see about from this team, honestly, is... And it might sound a bit weird... But I'd like to see them attempt an early swap, like a five-minute swap where... Uh, oh. I, I, know, I know usually... So I, thought you, you're talking about, I thought you were talking about like Saigon Joker swap for a second. No, I thought no, you were no, talking no, about no. that early. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That was so bad. No, please. Please don't remind me of that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I had to cast that, motherfucker. I had yeah, to cast that game. Yeah. Uh, no, I wanted to see, like, so usually what you, what we're seeing right now is, I think we saw it twice, uh, the delayed lane swap, but, like, uh, after five minutes. Um, usually it's when your top winner is is uh, ahead, right? And I think they can do something like that to, to try to mask their bot lane's weakness. Uh, I do it if your top I, lane's ahead, but also you do it if your top lane's uh, behind, like, if, if yeah, he's, like, GP or something. Yeah, I think you can do it in both situations. And yeah. I, I think it could help. It, it could help INTZ a lot to mask that. I, I believe they did that in one game of IWCQ. I don't know if you remember, Raz. I, I I I just have this idea that they did it in one game where they swapped early. Uh, maybe it wasn't. They do that. I think. I don't remember anymore. Actually, yeah. I, that's a good question. But yeah. I I think they should attempt it honestly, because they get outclassed so hard by Forgiven Mako, uh, by Forgiven Vander, by Deft and Mako. And and even even with Ann and Albus, they didn't do that well. So yeah, I I I would like to see try the the early the five minute swap, take down the get the first brick like get Revolta to to help them pressure and push the lane swap get the first brick, try to create advantages from that because INTZ know how to play with TP flanks and know how to play with an open map open map, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to pick that up and say that I generally agree with that. I think if they go up against... Their major point is H2K. I think if they go up against H2K, H2K has a, 
legitimately the most the weirdest mid game I've I, I've seen because their early game is is Weird. amazing, right? Weirder than Flash Wolves? I don't know if I'd go amazing. I think their early game is good. Okay, give yeah, it amazing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't 10, have said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I shouldn't. I, sh- I should. I should reserve amazing for an actual like a good point. But like they have a great early game and they have great lanes. So I, like that's a given, right? Mm. Uh, ooh, that's I, I like that already. A, a given. Okay. Anyways, oh. <laughs> I just have to appreciate myself. Pat on the back for that one. <laughs> Um, hell rest. But yeah, it's. <laughs> but with that being said, for I don't like, for the most part, I can usually explain a mid game from a team if they if they don't understand like a, a certain aspect, like a, like for instance for flash rolls, I could say okay maybe they don't understand the lane assignments. Like for me that that that's their weakest point in mid game. Mm. But with H two K, I know they understand that. I just I still don't understand. Like it has to be miscommunication because a lot of the times they do drop for free. Like they just they 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 drop lives just for being in the wrong position mm. and usually for most teams it's like they're in the wrong position because they're angling for a fight or they're trying to clear this they just drop for no reason so i'm there has i'm not sure what it is i'm not even going to try to speculate i'm just going to say h2k is not uh not the strongest mid game and i think that's going to be maybe the only thing that intz can hope to prey upon so if that's going to be something that they can look for then that, that's that's my point point. and if they the swap focus. they can ac- they can accelerate uh that phase mm. of the game by opening up the map so yeah. so yeah, my uh, my take on uh, HDK is that the, I I just don't think they can team fight. That's actually like my entire my entire theory on HDK's mid game. I just don't think they can team fight. I think they they clearly they clearly understand like they, they, like they understand the micro game. Like that's I know they understand the micro game because there's some games where they just execute it perfectly. We've seen it. We've seen some games in like the European like uh, in the European domestic league. You know, in playoffs, uh, we we saw a couple of games in playoffs. We saw some games in the regular season. Like we know they could play macro. It's just does yeah. it turn on? You know, and I think mm-hmm. honestly, God, it just comes down to whether their execution is on point on the day in terms of team fights because they can create the right fights and have the setup but what happens is they just like fuck up somehow like i don't know how i don't know why but they just fuck up and then what ends up happening is just like nothing happens so or like what will happen is like yankos won't get this early lead and i think that hurts his confidence i think he's very much a he plays is he strikes me as like an emotional jungler who's somebody who plays on feel quite a lot and he definitely strikes as somebody who, if he doesn't get that early snowball, he's kind of like, he starts to lose confidence and doesn't want to make as many plays. Whereas, like, when he's, like, on it and he's, like, smashing lanes everywhere and he just goes around the map and just solos the whole game, like, we see the God Yankos appear every now and again. Like, that's when you know that he's, like, he's he's feeling himself, you know? Like, he's on, he's in the zone, you know? And I think if you don't get Yankos in the zone, nothing happens. And I just don't yeah. think that team fighting is consistent enough. But, you know... I'm going to talk a bit about IT, INTZ as well because um, we've all talked about that, so I might as well finish that off. Um, INTZ strikes me as a team that uh, is just like super one dimensional. Uh, I think that one of the things we saw is that they exploited Mouse really hard, but I think that was quite also a lot of failure for EDG. Um, I'm going to yeah. touch a bit on EDG and why one of the things that they one of, one of the styles that they struck me as as well, which I think contributed to that. But I think definitely the way like INTZ plays is super one dimensional, and I just don't see teams falling for it. Again, you know, like I think next time when uh, INTZ play against um, EDG, I think th- they should start Scout because Scout looks to, ver- to be more of a kind of helping out lane- side lanes kind of player. And I think that's going to benefit yeah. Mouse a lot. Mm. Um, so I, I don't see them taking that game again. Um, but yeah, like I th- for me, INTZ just don't, they don't have the individual talent across the board or the versatility or the deep champion pool enough to be able to take enough games to get out of groups and i think the h2k i think it's too little too late they clearly haven't improved with what they should have um in the boot camp and i don't see it changing in four days of, of prep um so i think maybe like i think they'll be intz again but i don't think they have it in them to take hq and i don't think they have it in them to take edg so uh yeah. let's move on to with that let's actually move on to edg so i'm going to quickly start on edg because i'm wearing mine as well and i'm here um, yep. So EDG, one of the things, I know, I'm that guy, I'm so selfish. Go, go on, go on. <laughs> so oh, one, of the go it, about, one of the things I noticed about EDG is that like, um, Clearlove is like really efficient at uh, finding ways to take advantage in like non-standard situations. So again, we saw the Hecarim level 3 ganks, we saw, you know, like a bunch of other stuff. Like he's really good, he clearly understands the game at such a high, at, like a super high level because he sees 
ways to take uh, leads in areas where like a lot of junglers wouldn't because a lot of junglers kind of follow the steps you know like they do the standard level three clear and then they're in the river they clear the crab and then they look for a gank or whatever but like clear love kind of like sees past that and looks for like a super efficient way also one thing i really like about edg is the way they split the map so when somebody takes a lead on one side of the map they'll go to the other side and start trying to take leads there which is kind of what i think um, contributed to the way mouse just got dumpstered by intz because i think what they tried to do was go right mouse is going to get shit on there's nothing we could do to save like then let's try and split the map and like play for bottom side which they kind of did a bit but what happens is the mouse just got fucking shit on dude like he was playing so bad he was inting like real talk so i think that that's part of the reason why like INTZ took the game off of EDG. I think it just happens to be one of those really lucky stylistic matchups on the day that I don't think INTZ so I don't think EDG saw coming. Um and I think that's a large reason why uh EDG lost, but I don't see it happening again and I don't see INTZ taking that game. Mm. Uh, yeah. Now what's what's your thoughts on EDG? Um I think outside of their game versus INTZ, they've looked pretty, pretty solid. I think they found a way... First, they found a comfort pick in Poppy for Mouse. Um, yeah. We know that they don't really play... Uh, they don't really like to play around top lane, uh, especially in the early game. So having him on something that's more utility, that can scale, is pretty good. But then we saw versus SUK that... What, ha what, what are you going to do when Poppy is banned? And what we saw them do is still go back to... The, to the Aurelia, um, and well, while they didn't play around top lane in the early game, and Mouse had to kind of outplay uh, some dives, though he still died, but he he did he did his best to survive in that lane, uh, especially versus the pressure that Yankos and sometimes Ryu was providing there. After that, in the mid game, what I loved is they kind of changed their playstyle and played towards Mouse um, in the slip push, and we saw. Clearlove, with his Nidalee, just go into the enemy jungle towards the side where Mouse is split pushing and just cover for him and sometimes help him with dives and tower takes. I really like that. And if that's something really positive and I guess something we didn't really see from a team um, in previous patches. So if this is a change that can be... Um, if, if this is a change that they can continue improving on and playing towards top lane and this kind of carry-oriented meta... If Poppy is in band and no utility tops come out, um, then I can. Then I should. We should see EG go 3-0. I think in the second week, uh, and and may possibly even go deep, just because they they've been playing really well uh, with Mouse. They found the comfort pick, and they really know how to snowball leads in the mid game. To start on that point, I think with my point on that is I think a lot of people talk about it really as if it, and. It, I'm going to agree with it to a certain extent, is that Aurelia is a champion you have to play towards, right? You pick Aurelia and you have to like help it out in the matchups. So the way that Chinese teams play it, and specifically with EDG, is that they'll play it as a TP, like a bot lane TP play. Like for instance, they'll leave Mouse in that 1v1 matchup, and sure, if he gets shoved in, Aurelia can farm up fairly well. And if uh, he's in a good matchup, then he can take fine trades. But Aurelia is just like, okay, we give you Aurelia for the matchup, but we're, we'll still play towards bot side of the map. And then when you TP in for the play, Aurelia really is just like an actual beast in those TPs. So that's, um, yeah. that's, something, that, that's something that EDD, EDG does, and then picking towards those champions is not necessarily bad. It's just a different concept, a different mindset that they have with that champion. And just even to kind of pivot off that point is that a lot of questions were on to whether EDG can adapt, right? If they're going to adapt towards... Because they, they were that bot lane party team. Like, they play towards bot side. If it doesn't work out, then they're like, oh, well, you know, fuck, we just, <laughs> like, we're just going to have to hold on then. Hold on tight. Uh, <laughs> but they actually, through the... I don't know if it was through the playoffs, but definitely in the regular season, they've shown that if they get demolished in the bottom lane, it happens. It's a, like if they get in a really unlucky matchup or if they... Yeah, like for instance, if they decide to play Callista and they get fucked, uh, that they um, clear, clear love does tend to pat towards topside in in the second game or third game in the series. Like he helps out Mouse and he uh, when he feels it's necessary. But Jarja did make a good point: is that their team that they they split up the map. So if if Mouse dies, if he's in a bad position, they are not going to help him out directly. Like in that one yeah. game, they, maybe they'll for the next game they'll address it. But in that one game, they'll say we'll. We'll try and hit down, hit the other side of the map hard, 
and we'll maybe even create a TP play for you to get you out of that, the jail, uh, get out of the jail free card. But you have to just not feed. And yeah. he's done it before in GP, and he was in this situation as Aurelia, and he had that. He, yeah. did, he, he was a uh, hard feeding in that matchup. Let's deem you worthy for his presence. <laughs> you yeah, are not worthy. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, Shackle, so what's, your, just, just what's your thoughts? I, I mean, I, I think for me, um, I might be wrong, but I feel like EDG has been one of the teams that showed more growth in the first week. Maybe it's because they started off with a, a, a loss and then mm-hmm. they had kind of a contested game against the HQ. And then, I mean, I see them like on the up and up. You know, I think like, C9 did a bit of growth, but yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, maybe. Um, but but EDG is like one of those teams that I see on the up and up. Like they had that rocky mm-hmm. start, but they bounced back really well. Um, they had to play against quite a complicated comp from HQ. Um, that really HQ just built a comp to counter their own their their comp. Um, and then versus versus uh, um, H2K, I think they really adapted as well. How Nasser mentioned about playing around around mouse uh, for once mm-hmm. and, and the way how clear played 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 uh, in, in a way where he farms hard but he also pressures and he he managed to, to to have this balance between farm and pressure that was actually so cool to see because he was the the first or the second uh, player in the game to reach level 18 and yeah. that is that is unheard of in a jungler you know and no it's nidley yeah, yeah I mean, sure, he was sure. playing Nidalee. It, it, yeah. It's yeah. it's Nidalee, and he had kill participation, but um, I, I can't point out I can't point out many more Nid- like godlike Nidalee performances. You know, even though the champion is S tier, I, I think he's still impressed. Aside from like uh, that river uh, positioning that he had to flash, like the way he 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 managed to farm and still pressure, I think is, was pretty good. So I think they're they've been showing a lot of growth. They've been showing that they can play around mouse as well. Um, now the question is, what are they going to do with Mouse in other games? Are they like going to put him? I don't expect him for, for example, to see. I don't expect to see him like on a Jace, for example. I think that's out of question. But are they going to put Mouse on a Rumble? I don't know. Is Mouse a Rumble player? Like, does he play him? I Mouse? haven't seen him on him. Mm. No. So like, are, I don't think there's any evidence of it. Yeah. Are they going to put him on a on a Rumble on a Cannon because those are meta and. Like if the poppy is gone, probably cannon just because it fits the style. Yeah, but because mm-hmm. because poppy might be gone a lot of times, you know, and they can't really always go to Irelia. So that's that's my bigger question is what we're gonna see out of Mouse. Um, and then moving into AHQ, uh, since we've spent enough <laughs> enough time. Are you on... sure we spent enough time? Yeah, are you, yeah. Are you I, sure I about so. that? I think so. Um, okay. Get to the point, Shaq. Yeah, yeah, come on, you, you could do it. Yeah, the yeah. viewers are wondering why we're laughing because Shaq has said in chat, "I don't have much to say on EDG," and then he spends five minutes on them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, now for for HQ, um, they actually impressed me, and I guess I was wrong. Jarge uh, Jarge did talk about this on the first episode that didn't yeah, did. that didn't get to air, and he probably talked yeah, about it. Did. Talked about it uh, in the episode that it did air without me. Uh, oh, but, boy, Westor, yeah, I'm bringing it home. <laughs> but I, I, I was not expecting them to, to show up so so well, actually. Um, and they they're actually rotating the mid laners again, which is super interesting and is a super good strategy in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And they're one of the teams that actually did the delayed the delayed lane swap, which I think is is was pretty smart in that game as well. Overall, they're. They're like again. They're one of those teams, like Flash Wolves, that is not the best, uh, like individually, player player for player, but they're they can be cohesive, you know. And I think that's a trait that I really like to see in, in teams. I, I I don't know. I look at some games, like especially the EDG game. Even though they lost, and they know they're getting outmatched, like Vault Lane is. They know Anna Albus is not gonna stand up to to Mako and and uh, Deft, right? But they, they, they draft this composition just to nullify them. And I think that's really smart from them. So I'm really interested from this team. Um, and I, I actually think they take second in this group based on what we saw from week one. Okay, Raz, mm-hmm. give me your thoughts on AHQ. What yeah, do you think? I feel like I would say the same. I think AHQ draft smartly, uh, intelligently. That's, that's, an, that's a word. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Yeah. 
they draft intelligently. They play towards their strength. Um, I think there's there was that meme about Westor having a, a small champion pool. Mm, I don't think that's the case. I think even if it is the case, he can just play Malzahar all he wants, and it's just that it, it works well. It works the same. Mm-hmm. But my God, Ziv is a beast. Like is Jesus. It, though? Isn't he, he just I, the fucking Lord yeah. and Savior of Worlds this year? <laughs> I was so... At first, because I didn't watch much... Um, or at least, at mm-hmm. first I didn't watch much LMS. And I watched that team, just a little bit of that team. And I was kind of upset about the rest of the map. But every single time they pan up towards that top side of the map. Yeah. Or, or when they get into team fights in general. He's a real difference maker. He is. He just, he I, just puts the beat down on that entire region. And it, honest to God, he's put the beat down on this entire group. Like, I think his team's let him down a bit, but fucking Ziv, dude. What a when beast. When he played against INTZ, remember he was getting ganked now? He, that was already that was a bad <laughs> What a beast. He almost, like, uh, if, I, I just I, I wish he'd have killed the cannon, you know? It would have just been so good. <laughs> apparently, um, in an interview, he said that he knew, the, he knew Revolta was coming top. So he prepped the wave in which that uh, he'd have like a huge minion wave uh, to fight them under. And so that, that that just like presence of mind. Yeah. If he said and that, like the, the, great awareness. Yeah, in an interview, <laughs> in the interview on the score, like he he knew he knew the top the that Revolta was coming, and just the presence of mind to know that. Uh, and, yeah, he even and said that to, he planned to kill the cannon as well, like ahead of time. He was gonna fake yeah. it out. And, and so when you when you know the jungler is coming and. And to react in a way in which um, you're able to fight both of them in a minion wave, I think that's super smart. That's yeah. that's a, a sign of a good a player. He is. Insane. I mean, I mean, I've gone pretty hard on. Yeah, I mean, I've gone pretty hard on thinking for like going for the going for the outplay all the time and stuff. But I think that like this case is kind of different. Like. Ziv knew that he was going to get ganked, and he knew that he should outplay, like, all things considered. And he had a roam come in as well from from uh, from Westor. But all the same, like, just the presence of mind, to know that it's coming, have a prime ready, and then execute. It's like, I mean, he got unlucky. Like, he didn't miss the skill shot. He just got unlucky because Kenna was in a brush. Yeah. He had no vision. At that point, it's just blind yeah. luck, you know? But it's like, Jesus Christ, Ziv. I mean, I tell you what, though. He's going to get let down again. I've not been impressed with Mountain <laughs> so far. One thing I did know, it's like, I, I did spoke tell a little you bit that. I did tell about. you that. I did yeah, tell you know, that. I think I thought Matt would be good, but Matt was really hurt by the Gregus nerfs. I will say that. Like, he yep. was a huge Gregus player in LMS, and obviously Gregus can't be played anymore. But one thing that's been really disappointing about Mountain, one of the things I spoke about EDG is how they split the map. This is something Mountain doesn't do. Like, versus EDG particularly, like, I was being, because they had that crazy, like, level one bullshit in the bottom lane. Um, I was being zoned by EDG. Like, he was being zoned by Def. He had no creeps. Like, well, he was, like, 50 creeps down, and, like, he was, like, Deft was like pushing him like past the tower and Anne was like doing nothing and Manta was like farming his red while Ziv was at the enemy blue buff. Like yeah. they could have like cut they could have like coordinated and like gone inside and took the enemy blue buff. You split the map, you know, like Ziv is super far ahead of uh of Mouse and they had they already had like Mouse's tower down and they could have just like walked into the blue buff and taken it because Ziv had so much pressure. But Mount is sat there like farming his red in the top side of the map, like a, like farther away from anybody else on the map. It's like, come on, dude, split the map. Like mm-hmm. just 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 do your boys ever solid and like pr- like use his pressure for something, you know. But yeah, yeah so I I mean, right. I agree with that. We should yeah we should we should probably wrap up a bit on this group. So I'm gonna do my predictions. So my predictions are EDG is gonna come out first, purely off uh, roster talent, I think. Um, and I think that AHQ is going to come out second because I, I faith in my boys if and I think that um, you know we, we need to touch on Chowi just like for a second. I think they look really good with Chowi. I think the Chowi has really good lane pressure and it really opens up mountain a bit more i think versus uh specifically like intz they can really afford to from west door because uh Tokus is such a weak laner um so i think that like west door can get away with him being a also a weak laner and i think west door is like a better macro player but i think if they really need that lane pressure chowie seems to be a really good fit um so i, I think just the versatility there for age for hq kind of really gives them the edge over h2k and i don't see intz taking another game for the rest of this group so uh, that's my yeah. that's my predictions. HQ will have two red side games, I believe. So we should see Chawi in both no, those no, games. No, if... One red side game. Oh, oh. one red side. Yeah, really? Against INTZ. Against INTZ. Uh, okay. Yeah, they'll run Wester so... in that game, then I imagine. So maybe. Okay. Well, I hope we see Chawi, even though they lost the game with him. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe against INTZ. Um, one thing I've learned is never to predict when they're gonna use a sub. 
I, that's yeah. that's IMA for me. Like they just they can do so well with Athena for a billion games, and they'll just randomly put in Bami. So yeah. Um. But yeah, I I echo what George said about this group. I think I uh, EDG should come out on top, HQ second, and unfortunately H2K will bomb out of the groups at this point. Yeah, with INTZ. Yes. Um, can we? Can I just quickly make a point about there is actually a chance both LMS teams make it out of groups again and go to the quarters? Yeah. Can we just point that out after everyone was shitting on the whole region? So sorry, yeah, Shaka, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just, gonna oh, say, me. just to follow up on 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 that, the difference is like last year I actually predicted them to come out of of groups because I thought the teams were strong. Yeah. And this year, this year I thought the teams were coming in weaker, but they've adapt, they've shown up. They've shown up. You know. Also, everybody else is shit. Yeah. Let's, let's not yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's I, mean, not I, 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 I don't think yeah. anyone expected EU to shit the bed this hard. I, I At least in week one, we still we still week yeah. two pending. Uh, I, I just I wanted <laughs> yeah. to mention I wanted to mention um, schedule again because I think it's important. Uh, Shaka and his schedule. Yeah, J George, George, you, you mentioned you mentioned that INTZ might not win one more game, but when INTZ and H and H2K face each other. It might just happen that both teams are out when they face each other. Like, don't you tell me you can see like HQ beats H2K and then EDG beats H2K and H2K is out. And then, oh yeah, hundred percent, I can see. Yeah, that, yeah. And, then, and then and then it I, can INTZ is out as well, and INTZ is like, yeah, let's go out with a bang because like we won our second win, we wouldn't want to be behind pain, and you know they're gonna give it their all, and maybe H2K is like already depressed or some shit because they're out of they're not out of groups because you but have that to... doesn't give them the tiebreaker with HQ. I still don't, I can't see no, that. No, no, no. I'm not saying to HQ tiebreaker. No, so you just said you're just, just making a point about them not winning anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make win. a point about that. I think it's like a null point simply because it's uh, it's one of those points where you're like, okay, well. At this stage, they don't give a fuck. You don't try and predict like gaming gear EU to beat out a TSM. Not like that kind of like <laughs> that kind of prediction, right? So yeah, while I agree based sure. on the schedule, it's kind of like it's a it good might point. Happen, but it, but yeah, it's blind speculation. This is not analysis, Shaka. Let's yeah, let's have know, real sorry. gameplay yeah. analysis. Come on, let's assume all teams come in at peak performance. Yeah, yeah. Um, These EU predictions, man. First yeah. they're play, and now they're analysts. I know. God. Uh, <laughs> Next, yeah, you'd be telling me that like. The coach was sick. No, Good but draft. actually, actually, yeah, I think that's <laughs> true. INTZ probably doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't win another game. I think they're looking way too weak, um, and these bot lane problems have been going on for for quite a while now. And when you can't mm -hmm. win bot lane and or stay even at a at a wild card level, um, and then you land in a group with probably two of the best bot lanes in the tournament, you know, you're kind of screwed. Um, but yeah, uh, I think EDG takes it first. Um, I have l some hope that H2K can can maybe make it out, and it's all gonna be about that that game versus uh, that first game versus AHQ, you know, because you have to consider that H2K is already behind in terms of uh, results because they're one and two, and and AHQ yeah. is two and one, right? So H2K yeah. really need to win that game that first game of the day and then try try to at least beat out INTZ so they can have two wins in their in their second week. But you know, we'll see. We'll see how they do. Okay. But let's I, finish up with uh, gets sorry. Out. Yeah, HQ gets out second, I think. All right. So Raz, give us your prediction and we'll move on to group D. Give it to me. It's just it's just a quick EDG and AHQ. Like the other two teams aren't showing anything for me. I already pretty much mentioned it, so that's that's just how it is. EDG. That's fine. Let's 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 get it on the record then. So uh, Group D. So Group D. Raz, tell me, is TSM gonna go three zero this week? <laughs> yes. Gonna do I'm it? gonna give it a yes. Hey, actually, gonna you're gonna go for it. Oh, oh, that's a oh, bold oh, claim. I'm going for it. All in. I'm going bold for it. claim on the I'm just NA. throwing it on there. Jeez. Your boy be out of So you can't give bills. us that prediction without telling us why that's gonna happen. Yeah, though. come on. Back I have it up. I have as one of like they're. I think they're the favorites coming out of this tournament. Everyone talks about EDG. Everyone talks about uh, Rocks Tigers. After legitimately finally seeing how the groups are going for themselves, TSM while having poor games, they had a like for instance other teams had bad excuses for coming out fairly poorly. Like for instance, yeah. Smeb is sick, but Smeb, Smeb is the top laner, and we see problems coming out of Pina, right? And if it's TSM's, like, if 
uh, Bjergsen is sick and literally can't talk. Holy shit, that's their mid laner, and that motherfucker talks a lot. And they've still yeah, shown does. like great. He's their yeah, and so like so I think, I still I think that they've still shown uh, a great movement on the map, even with those yeah. problems, even Can when I they were going up against Splice. Can I just clarify? Yeah, Are you calling TSM as the favorites to win the tournament? Is that what yes. you're saying? Holy oh, oh, shit, man! Sit Let's guy. go. I'm saying that. The boat prediction from War Room. That's what I'm. That's what I like. I, I was expecting this shit from George, not you. <laughs> Spoiler alert! I also think they're favorites for the tournament. I will explain why. Ooh. Explain why later. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Raz, who's who's taking second in this group? Let's actually just go down the the predictions one by one, and then we can finish up with some questions. So, who's taking uh, second? Uh, RNG. I think RNG. Really, over Samsung? Is, okay, just yeah, that was a surprising state, one please. for me. Okay, so for my pick 'em. Uh, mm -hmm. This was the serious point of my group. I had RNG coming out in fourth place. Actually, I had them as dead last. But then when I finally saw them play, they saw like they played uh, spring slash pre, like a little bit of a summer uh, a blend of RNG where they were playing incredibly smart, where they weren't taking random awful team fights, right? And so I think the way that they're playing is. Um, exactly, it's just pretty much playing around MLXG's weakness and strength and playing around uh, Mata's major strength in, in terms of just him controlling the fights. Mm. And so I think right now RNG is playing really well in terms of just the pure mechanics of their play. I think mechanically every indi every player, I still need to I still need to watch more of Xiaohu. I think right now Xiao I'm not too sure if he's yep. playing at his peak. Don't think so, but I think for the rest of the map, they're all playing incredibly well. And I think if they keep playing at that level, while at the same time still playing a tempered playstyle, they come out second. Okay, so you're not feeling splice. What what do you what does RNG specifically take it over Samsung Galaxy? I think that question okay. needs to be asked. That's a good point. I think with uh, RNG, it's going to be simply because their playmaking around Mata and uh, let me. See. I think it's specifically. I think their playmaking around it, how they play the early game to uh, mid to late game, is hyperactive. Like they play, they play strong early. They play strong mid. They play strong late. Samsung Galaxy right now, they still play towards that scaling composition. And the early games, I'm not too convinced about simply because that's that's the style that they play towards. Yep. And I think it, I think it will get exploited if they continue that style. Obviously, I can't. Uh, we don't know what happens in second week. But if that's okay. the style they look to play towards, that's going to be a problem. So nothing on splice. You're not feeling it. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I mean, because you used to coach that team, right? Or you were on that team yeah. in some capacity, right? A while back. Yeah. So, so you're not feeling it. I mean, you're old boys. I, I think they can take a game or two. They've been showing some good uh, points in their play. Like for instance, mm -hmm. up against TSM, they can take the early game. Sure, they made a little bit, and they're in the same position of Ime where. Going into this tournament, I liked Ima's play, right? I, I think that they were great and they were growing, but right now mm -hmm. Splice is in the similar situation where they are probably one of the best playing European teams right now, but they're in legitimately the shittiest group. So it's like yeah. you can't do much about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I tweeted about this earlier on, actually. I think the, uh, Splice has been... Splice has had the roughest group of any of any team. So if you look at like a team of what they can uh, what the level they can perform to and you know that they're also like comparing that with the strength of their group. I think Splice got the worst group of any of any team here. Yeah, you know, like you can argue like strong. Yeah, like group A was pretty stacked, but I think that like you know like CLG isn't as much of an underdog as Splice uh, and like CLG always has like like CLG has that pedigree that um, Splice just doesn't have. Um, so yeah, for me I I just don't see like a way that Splice can overcome that sheer it's just too much of it. It's too big a hill to climb for me. I mean, I think they've mm -hmm. played really well. Senkux for me has stepped up huge. I think that, yeah. um, you know, like I think Mickey X has actually shown some some interesting things. I think he had a, uh, a couple of bad performances there and there, but I think overall he's he's shown up really big. Um, for me, actually, I think Kobe's been a bit of a disappointment actually, and I think mm -hmm. Wonder as well. Like especially Wonder Wonder's Cled, yeah, Wonder's Cled game for me was super underwhelming. Like I expected, like when you bring that out in the world stage, that's got to be like. You gotta practice that shit, man. You can't bring out cheese like that and, and have it like that level. I mean, I think he 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 played okay, um, but I think other than that, yeah, I'm not seeing too much. But let's talk about TSM because I know that oh, that's, that's all anyone's the, here for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you I just want a little room? bit, a small bit. Yeah, a small. Yeah. Sorry about that. I want to actually get a small bit in about that because I think his club play was. I'm gonna say it's good with a asterisk because of the asterisk is simply because the lane match i think picking Clyde into rumble is a bad decision right mm -hmm. rumble is going to be able to completely shove that lane in and have uh, trade power into it. if you play Clyde, that's his call though you know that's that's still yeah. on him i think 
the reason say, why I think that's a, it's fine is if you have jungle control, and those are many ifs, right? Mm -hmm. So my biggest issue is that I think my uh, my favorite thing about splice is that they can when they are in a deficit, their comeback into a fight is based on stalling play. Like they can stall for another fight, they can TP in for another fight, right? Or and yeah, I think that's, Wonder that's, that's did that there, actually. Mm -hmm. And then Wonder did that a lot this game, where he when he was behind, he would. It wasn't so much on his TP, but his ulti. Like, he would try and force so many plays to keep them on the map mm -hmm. rather than backing. And it obviously came to such a... Like, they lost those fights anyways. And so, if he had won those... If they had played those mechanically better, they had won those fights, He's he comes out as a god. Sure, but sure. But, obviously, because they lost those fights, it looks awful. So, like, I guess from the very beginning, the early game, obviously, like, picking Clyde in that situation was bad. They got exploited from that point even further. That was bad. And then they go for the... Uh, the mid game, late game extension of those team fights, I thought he played that role well. Okay. I, I just wanted to say that I just wanted to flame Wonder again for that fucking cannon build. It really triggered me. Where he goes like, no Zonias. He, he, like, he was building Zonias as a six item against TSM. And he went like death cap really early into the game. He never got the Zonias, so he could never really impact team fights. And I think that Splice when Wonder is, is playing well and he's performing, is a much more dangerous team. And when he's doing these XD things where he just ints, almost, he almost int feeds, it's like he just ruins his team's chances. So uh, I, um. I, won't say, I won't say that this team lives and dies by this player, but uh, I, feel like, I feel like if he performs, he, he, can, really, he can really increase his team's... Uh, his performance is a good indicator of how the team will do, yeah. I think is a yeah, fair yeah, way yeah. of putting that, it. That's a good way of putting it, actually. Well, okay, will... so... While you're talking, Checker, will... let's yeah. let's get your prediction. Sorry, Raz, I'm gonna cut you off a second. Yeah, I wanna get okay, I wanna no get Checker's worries, no prediction. No yeah, before yeah, predictions, for it, I just wanna it. say I, I hope Splice gets to play spoiler. It's Group D after all, so I I, I hope they get to play like the Kaboom role, even though they're mm -hmm. not a wild card. Might as well be with how EU is doing, but eh. he is a wild card, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, I I hope they can play spoiler. Um in this group it would be insanely fun. Predictions. Uh I actually think uh, TSM and RNG as well. Um, Ambition hasn't um, Ambition hasn't really uh, impressed me. Um, mm -hmm. He's had these moments where, like, I don't know, like invading when you're when you're lane back when your lanes are backing or your lanes don't have pressure. Like, let's say your your lane doesn't have pushing power, right? I mean, that's just lack of communication at a basic level, and it's it's something that really needs fixing and it, I don't think they can fix it from an, one week to another. Um, mm -hmm. It's a shame because I, I do think that Samsung team has some really some really good individuals and and the, their play is, is, is okay but they got some up and coming youngsters like this ambition guy. He's a he's a promising rookie <laughs> I think. But yeah ambition just had like this moment against TSM where it was so dumb and even other games, he hasn't really. I know he wasn't like the player I was looking for to impress me, but I don't know. I, I just don't think they can make it because they he'll just get out jungled by Sven and by by MLXG, and I think sure. that's a, that's a big point in the meta so, as a jungler. So give me a prediction. Give me a prediction, Shaka. So Who's my, taking it first? Who's taking it second? My prediction is. Hmm. My prediction is TSM take it first, um, mm -hmm. and Royal take it second. Maybe we see a tiebreaker, like something like, let's say TSM beat Royal, but then TSM lose against Splice. That that would be like a really TSM thing to do. In my opinion. <laughs> Actually, <it> would <laughs> right, right? Like they lose against yeah. Splice, they're behind, and then last game of the day they beat RNG, and suddenly they're like tiebreaker with RNG for first place. I can see something like that happening. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna say like. TSM go first, with or without tiebreaker. I don't know. And then RNG second, and, and uh, hopefully Splice can play some play spoiler and, and maybe get a win or two. But yeah. Okay. Say so, NASA Group D. Who's got that All X right. factor? First, I have to stop the TSM hype train for just a second. Thank you. Um, I think I, I think from week one alone, we I I just can't. Say, um, boldly the say that they're, they're fav here. that they're favorites to win worlds, and quick two quick reasons why. One, they played 
uh, a Samsung and RNG that basically um, got full scaling lanes uh, in both those games versus Samsung and versus RNG. They still lost in the mid game, mind you, uh, just because they faced a team that are on an elite level when knowing how to play when they're behind. They knew how to fight. They know how to create picks. Um, so when they face those elite teams that know how to play that mid game, um, and especially when they're not playing against someone who uh, has drafted full scaling comps, uh, there's, there, I think they're going to find some issues. And then for Samsung, let's not forget the XD from Ambition Invading, <laughs> uh, which Shaka already mentioned. Uh, on top of that, they did play a risky full scaling comp in all three lanes, plus giving away the Syndra to Bjergsen. And then they play Splice, who showed an awesome strategy of banning all the S-tier junglers and picking the last one, which was Rek'Sai, and then giving Sven uh, Skarner. And while Sven still played really well, still played that invade style with Skarner, Trashy was still able to, just because of how uh, good Rek'Sai is in moving around the map and farming uh, and ganking in the early game, they were they were able to get those advantages in the early game um, from, from, the, from that strategy in draft. We also saw them lose when they're behind. They don't know how to um, get back into the game. The only time they got back into the game from Splice was when Splice were uh, continually getting picked off, uh, not flashing out of the uh, when the Skarner was coming at them, etc., etc. So from that week one, the only good thing I saw from TSM um, was the synergy between Bjergsen and Sven, the invade style, how Bjergsen controls lane. With that said, I will still predict TSM first because okay. I don't think uh, because I don't think that RNG and Samsung are the teams that will um, be able to outdraft and outsmart TSM in game. They might lose a game to Samsung or RNG, one of them, but I still predict them to come out first. They might have to play a tiebreaker for first. Uh, I think they do that, right? If there's a tiebreaker first. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. there's so, really um, likely to be a tiebreaker in Group D. Yeah, yeah, very likely. So I think I think a tiebreaker first between like, oh, fudge, like Samsung and RNG are also good teams, but yes. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a tiebreaker for first. Um, Pick your poison, buddy. Yeah, we might even see like four two, four two, four two, four two. I think that that can happen, right? As yeah. well. Yeah. So we, we, we'll that. see. Yeah. So we'll see. Like I I I, I will still. Bet on TSM first, um, and then honestly, I really don't do know it. who's gonna come out second. But I'm just gonna say Samsung because Korea OP. Okay, <laughs> I so really I'm don't a, have good analysis for that. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about this. So I, so one of the right. one of the big themes that we've seen is like t teams developing their strategies, and you know I think again EDG, good example of this, a team who's kind of evolved a little bit. I think C9 has been doing a bit of evolving. Um, but actually, I think TSM has been doing a bit of evolving. I think in the first game against RNG, you know, there was like real level under un un underestimation. I think Doublelift played particularly poorly. But one of the mm. things we saw is he definitely stepped it up in the later games. And yes, I do think draft was a factor. Uh, when did he? When did he step it up? When he kept dying in side lanes to their third game. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a <laughs> macro that's a macro issue, not an individual issue. You know, that's a that's a. Okay. You know, like I, I think that but even as a as a macro issue, I think that was a proper thing. But we'll go on to that afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I okay. think that like, I actually didn't have as much of a problem with him being in that side lane as maybe some of the people some of the people think. Um, I agree with you. It's, there. Yeah, it's it's like I think TSM uh, from a strategic perspective uh, definitely stepped it up. Um, I think from an individual perspective, I think they also stepped it up. Um, and I think if they continue to step it up, and again, like I don't really like putting much kind of weight on things like players being sick and things like that, but it is a factor. Um, so maybe if Bjergsen was sick and you know maybe they step it up, I think maybe they do go back to that level of coordination that they had in the in their domestic play. So I, I think that for me, I think like definitely shows to me that I think they they are improving in the moment, and I think their level of um, improvement may continue and i think that's a good indicator for me enough for me to justify them coming out first in the group i also think that they're the, they're the team that has shown the most uh they are 
good enough in the early game. They're like, in my opinion, I think they're actually the best early game team. I think they're slightly better than Flash Wolves, given the strength of the competition they're playing against gives them an extra few points in that category. Um, I don't think that's unfair to say. Uh, but I also think that uh, their mid game is substantially stronger than Flash Wolves. And, you know, we've seen Rox is another favorite to take the tournament, but their early game has been looking really poor, which gives TSM a stylistic advantage. Again, SKT, another team that's looking like a favorite. I think that um, TSM is in a prime position stylistically to take them down. I think Vic has been showing real vulnerabilities, and I think that Bjerg and Sven Skaren, for me, have been the two, the best two players in the tournament. Like in terms of how they work together, I think they've been super, super on point. You know, like I think that the the side lanes for TSM is maybe not as not quite as strong, but because of that pure strength in the two v two in the mid lane, I definitely think that they're primed to take out Rocks and SKT. And I think they're the other two teams that are real favorites to take the tournament. I mean. Uh, arguments about EDG, but you know, whatever. That's a different conversation. As for second place, I actually give it to e uh, to Samsung because I think, uh, in terms of again of the development theme that we've been talking about, I think Samsung definitely stepped it up as well. I think they showed much more diversification. I actually think I disagree with Shaka. I think ambition has improved. I think he showed yeah. much better games in the later part of the the group stage. Um, I think he looked much more coordinated with his teams. His Italy looks really fucking good. Uh, you know, like I think ambition is a threat. I think maybe there were some, you know, XD moments with ambition invading, but you know, like shit happens. You know, it was like we can't crucify, um, like, like you, I don't think you can crucify somebody for one invade if it's not a systematic issue. And I didn't see a systematic issue in, in Samsung Galaxy. Maybe I missed some things, but you know, yes, I did see some issues there. Um, and yes, maybe it's a symptom of something larger, but I don't think it is. Um, I did see enough there to give me real concerns about Samsung. I think they're far more consistent than RNG, um, and I just don't, I just don't see it in RNG. You know, like I think that that early game looks really fucking good, and I, they shit stomp supply super hard. But I think that TSM dropped the ball against RNG, and I don't think they'll do it again. I think a real fire was light under their ass um, after that loss, and I don't, th I just don't see why they would make that same level of mistake again because we haven't seen a TSM team. Um, systematically make the same mistakes over and over. What we have seen is them improve and fix the the issues that have plagued them. So, my 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 prediction is TSM will come up first. Um, I actually don't want to go on record as saying what score they'll be. I, I, it's too sure, sure, it's sure. too hard. This game is so hard to, to call like who's going to win each game. But I think TSM will come up first, uh, with or without tiebreakers. I think um, Samsung Galaxy is going to come out second purely because I have seen that level of improvement and I expect it to continue. Uh, RNG, I think, have actually regressed slightly. I think they started out really strong and have kind of fallen off a little bit. Not enough, but to really say they're like not going to definitely get other groups, they can. I think there's a real shot for them. Um, but I've not seen that level of improvement that's that I've seen in Samsung. And the Splice is just too far behind. They're zero three. They don't have the, the they don't have the talent and they don't have the macro to, to make it out of this yeah. group. I think. So, this I, I just so, wanted to defend myself with the, the thing you mentioned yeah. about. Uh, I kind of I kind of uh, forgot about a bit about the the Samsung versus RNG game, which was really clean from Samsung. Yeah, that's what I think. But, but I, I also think there was a really cocky draft from RNG. And, yeah, you're right. And I don't know. I, I, I feel like they won't do it again. But they are RNG after all, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think they for might, me... They this might is do be another just... cocky draft, so. Yeah. I'll just, uh, just uh, butt in for the TSM piggyback, because for me... Uh, one of my biggest questions were going to be Sven Skarin because he, it felt like throughout the season there were points where he would get pulled around the map rather than creating his own advantages. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like that definitely changed. Like obviously, what a great meta for Sven Skarin though, stylistically. What a yeah. great meta for him, you know? Mm -hmm. Like this is what yeah, he wanted true. to play for forgot. four years. Like <laughs> I almost forgot he was a Lee Sim player. I actually I almost forgot about that. Uh, but yeah, he 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 was actually playing super well, uh, even in their loss. Like he was playing fantastically well. So if if we have a TSM that no, not only has like a, a strong individual lanes and they're at a uh, a deficit simply because uh, Bjergsen cannot talk, it's a bit of faith, of course. But we we're seeing individual strength from every single one of those players. And even when that one earlier point that we mentioned, where Double Lift was getting caught in that side lane, what was and this is this is going to be an earlier point because I think um, Shaka, you you pointed out wonder, but that's not even a wonder issue. That's just a team issue, right? What is um, uh, Sengtox doing in that side lane? He, it overall he should not be there. If Doublelift dies, fine. But what do they get off of that? If if 
Splice are in such a massive advantage with a, a Malzahar composition like that, they should be grouping and grouping on the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that the was, that was the how I thought about it as well. Yeah, and so like for me right now, uh, TSM they have the bright idea of how to play the map, and I think they have the mechanics to be able to pull that through and the shot calling and decisiveness. So for me, that's why I kind of I'm all over them, uh, all over them on that one. I think they got it. Uh, yeah, that's about it for me actually. I just wanted to say that, like you, you mentioned, all individual players are really good. I I haven't been impressed by Biofrost at all. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Even good. even though even though Double Lift improved, I, he's not really at his playoff level, honestly. So I disagree in that front. I I also don't peg um, TSM as that that high of a candidate to win it all. Um, I I I just like to mention real quick that I think. That going from BO once to then group stage to bracket stage actually changes a lot, and I can see some of these teams really showing up in bracket stage, like Rocks, like SKT, really showing up their true form once they get there. Um, you know, because there there are teams that when they get to like the BO five stage, like uh, they really show up. Like you've seen SKT, like with with bad with bad seasons, they just get to the bracket stage, and, and they show up massively. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just can't consider a TS a TSM yeah. a favorite from that, uh, based on Can that I quickly well. follow up on the SKT thing? I think yeah. we can actually expect SKT to fall in, in, in a best of series. I think what we saw, particularly at MSI, was they never played against the mid focus team, except when they did in Flash Wars and they lost. Mm. And I think that, you know, Rox is not a mid focus team, which means they don't punish Faker that hard, which is why SKT, I think, has a huge stylistic advantage against Rox. I think that's actually the focus. I think if SKT plays a best of five against TSM or against Flash Wolves or against any team that really like plays through the middle and has that really good mid jungle synergy. I actually think SKT will lose. I don't think it's they can. I think they will. I think their their deficit is so. I think it's so mm -hmm. glaring. I just I just I look at that lane and I'm like, holy shit! How do you not just like repeatedly kill Faker over and over? How do you not just like invade yeah. his jungle because Blank is left isolated with no support? It's it's like I just. It's it's a real concern for me, and also Rox has I mean, shown poor early game three games in a row now. So, yeah. so let me so, ask yeah. you one question, Judge. Yeah. Actually, because yeah. uh, this is going to lead into something more. But uh, what would you? Because I know SKT is coming in as a second seed. What do you yeah. think they are in an overall Korean strength, right? Including teams that are not right now in Worlds. Where do you place them? I think. It's a stylistic thing. It's not about yeah, like is, I yeah. think it's it's purely a stylistic thing. I actually think that I think Rox is the overall strongest team, but I think Samsung Galaxy and SKT are both good in different ways. I think mm -hmm. SKT is so good individually across yeah. the board, minus like the synergy issues. Because even Blank is an individual player, it's very talented, you know, it's great mechanics, yeah. all five of them. But uh yeah, I think um I, I'd rate Samsung Galaxy and SKT about equal. I think KT also around that same tier, but I think Rox is a tier above just because their okay. their mid game is just so good. It's just okay. their team so fighting, the coordination, the TPs, the way they work together is just too good. Because um, my yeah. framing on this was I, I actually put in uh, Samsung as a uh, second place team right now. Obviously, it's stylistic, and that's a really good point. And I think that if SKT continues to play towards that style like they did with when they had Bengi, then they will show themselves as like a second place team, right? But mm -hmm. uh, if they are kind of like playing a little bit too A, greedy, but B, not really focused on an identity, yeah. mm -hmm. then I actually I think they come off as a fourth place Korean team. Where sure. KT, so I actually... Uh, I think mm -hmm. they, if if they actually get the head to head against Rox, I think they'll win, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because it's okay. a slightly advantage for SKT. But I think Rox is the better team. Okay, yeah, that's, that's how I want to frame it. So, yeah. does anyone have anything else they want to say about Group D? So, so just to yeah, confirm, yeah. So, so, just to confirm, Jarge and Raz say definitively that uh, TSM will win Worlds. No, right now they are. No, what I'm saying is that you can't. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. You're not gonna strum on me like that. Don't, don't, don't put words in my mouth. What I'm saying is, based on the available, based on the available information we've seen so far, TSM and is three looking. Best of ones. Like, yeah, three best of ones. Based on the available information so far, TSM is looking like the most rounded team and stylistically suited to win the tournament so far. Yep. And remember, and that, that these predictions were made yeah. before the tournament, right? Yeah. Before yeah. the tournament, the predictions that were made was rocks. EDG, they're coming against front runners. Now we actually have some legitimate information. Yeah. And if once we have that information, are we still putting EDG on that front on that uh, front runner list? For sure, I'm not. I, I wouldn't either. I mean, Mouse is too well, weak. I, I, for me, 
I can't. I, I don't want to change my pre world prediction until after group stage. I I think yeah. so for I me think it's sure. unfair un, unfair uh, analyt analytically to uh, you know kind of predict the trajectories of these teams. You don't want to draw big conclusions points. from small information. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, but I, yeah, I I, I want to see a more dominant TSM. I know they have it in them. I know they have the the training the mentality to have a better week week two. Um, so we'll see. I think w once we once we get through this week two, we'll have a better idea of how how strong these sure. teams are. Let me say this: if Rocks clean up their early game and it's good, then they're they're my favorites again. But they have to clean it up, and it's got to be good. Yeah, you know? that's they my can't thing. Be... That's my thing. I need to see this yeah. week. I need. I really need to see this week. Yeah. Yeah. Before before I, I look at it again, because like if we look at Rocks and sure, like let's say like Rocks goes three zero this week, but have like two poor early games. Then I'm like, yeah, these guys are looking really shaky, you know, because mm. like they haven't mm. faced like elite competition yet. Um, I mean, but I I I I think that Rocks can just like show up today and just like just show just uh, out of nowhere, yeah, boom. If Rocks three games sweeps like in three twenty-five minute games, they're the favorites to win it. I think. I think it's yeah. pretty. I I think it's undisputed at that point. I don't think you they they've got the best mid game. I think of any team. I think they turn a gold lead into a into a nexus faster than anybody else and with the most efficiency. And yeah, and, so and they, they fight early. They and they're they've been fighting with deficits like as if they weren't deficits. Oh, so. the team fighting is a yeah. thing of beauty, man. Yeah. Oh my like, god, it makes me the most, so the the most beautiful thing I sensitive. saw from them was actually from the game they lost, where um, Smeb has that flank on on Poppy from mid lane, where he like he he ults away two targets. Like, but he does it so fast, where he ults away like two targets or three targets, and then he, he heroic charges the other, and they pick off one, and they win like a two for uh, one for zero team fight kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it's just, like, they're, yeah. they're here's, just really here's what scares me. Hmm. Here's what scares me about worlds right now is that when you when you see teams like TSM or or just teams in general, right, uh, when they have themselves that lead against a Korean team, you're you always have a bit of fear inside because you're like. Yeah. <laughs> I, you always feel like I have more of that fear versus a wild card team. I'm like, they're just gonna throw, man. It's gonna be really embarrassing. Yeah. They're just gonna throw. <laughs> it's yeah, it's no, gonna no, happen. That, that was me watching Guy NTZ. I'm like, okay, you got the lead, but can you really close this out? You know. Okay, so yeah. right, let's uh, let's wrap this up a bit. I got one question for all of you before we okay. close it out. So what okay. we're gonna do actually is we're gonna go through just so there's a there's a timestamp. I want everyone to go through uh, what their predictions are for each group, just so there's like a like a like a, a five minute segment of the video that people can go to just to watch the the predictions. Um, if they want, they can look at the the justification. So we'll start with Raz. If you could just go through A, B, C, and D, what your predictions are for each group. Don't have to talk about the teams that are not coming out. Just talk about the two teams you're yeah. gonna come out in what order. G2 and CL. Oh, oh, I already messed up. Holy G2. shit. Okay. Yeah, rocks, <laughs> Tigers, down, Raz. rocks. Holy shit. I'm memeing that. <laughs> uh, rocks, Tigers, and CLG. Uh, SKT and Cloud9. Um, EDG and AHQ. Uh, TSM and Ro uh, Royal Never Give Up. Okay, so Shaka, you can go next. Uh, so, Rocks and CLG. Um, mm -hmm. SKT and C9. EDG and AHQ. And TSM and Royal, so same as Raz. Okay, NASA. Same. Okay, and yeah. then mine is exactly the same, except I have Samsung make uh, Samsung making out of Group D, uh, but I do have again uh, Rocks, CLG. Uh, I think SKT is going to come out first, and then I think the C9 is going to come out second. EDG and then HQ, yeah, and then TSM and then Samsung. So I, I one last say, question. I, I really, I really hope Flash Wolves make it out, even though I'm not. Yeah, same. Them. I really want them to make it out, same. but I think they, it's the the score deficit is too much. I think. Um, anyway, we'll see. so. Uh, one question, uh, one fun question, I guess. So, I want you to rate your top three players based on the performance so far at Worlds. Individual performances so far at Worlds. So, NASA, I'm going to go with you first. Holy, um... Oh, shit. That, <laughs> okay, so in order, or just like top three? Uh, if, you order, in order, if you want to do in it in order, order you too hard. A... Yeah, in order okay. is too hard. But I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick... Uh, Sven, sounds scary that is, um, oh, Karsa, yeah. and Ziv? Ma Mata, or maybe Ziv? Yeah, it's really hard to pick up third one. There are a lot of good ones, like Mata, yeah, Ziv, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, may maybe even Smeb, kind of. 
Yeah, but for me, Sven and Karsa, top two for sure. Okay, sure. So, Shaka, let's go with you next. I think, I think Sven. Um, Sven Skeren. Yeah, Sven Skeren. Sven Skeren. Okay, let's just make that yeah, clear. Yeah, 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 Sven, Sven, yeah okay. Sven Skeren. Like... Sven Skeren. Um, you even pronounce your S like a Z, so I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hold up, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sven Skeren for sure. Um, I want to say Carson Ziv, but who am I missing? Oh, yeah. I'm LMS yeah, uh, yeah, Uzi, I'm Uzi Aoi, Mata. Yeah, I can, Holy shit, how did I forget yeah, about actually, that? Actually, I'm going to do, I'm yeah. going to say, I'm gonna say uh, Sven Skeren, um, Ziv, and and uh, Mata, and not put in Carson. Because the team is okay. one and two. Yep, okay, that's fair. Raz, give it to me. What do you what do you go? Uh, what do you go, man? There you go. I'll go Sven Skarin, Uzi, and Trick. I think Trick, even though that team has been awful, I think he's been really? playing very well. Trick. Wow. Trick, Trick over Carson. Top three? Yeah. I think, wow, yeah. I think even wow. though he had that one uh, little bit of an if, iffy situation, I think he's actually been playing his role well. And even in that Olaf game, he was just like literally 1v9ing. Yeah, he almost 1v9ed the tournament favorite. Like, that, yeah. let's let's not understate that. Yeah, that's, let's, that's fair. <laughs> okay, so my, my picks are, again, Sven Skarin, I think for me, has been the clear standout number one player at the tournament so far. I think he's been mm -hmm. fucking awesome. Like, that dude yeah. has gone... Like, could we just all oh, just sit back and appreciate for a second the journey that Sven Skarin's had? Like, <sighs> even just this year. Like, but Wait, I'm over, taking my head over, off. Yeah, over the journey, over the journey of his career, like, Sven Skarin, my boy, Dennis, you know, you know I got love for you, man. Like, Keep that shit up, man. You just you are smashing it. Don't let any don't let the haters get you down, man. You are you are world class, truly world class. What a beast! The hope for the West because he is a European on an eighteen. Jesus Christ! But yeah, so I think Sven Skarin for me number one, um, and I actually am going to put Smeb number two because I think even though like his team hasn't like won all his games for me, yeah. Smeb has just been such a good player on on rocks like he really shows why he is considered the best player in the world right now i think that the shit he does with like no resources because he really wasn't getting like much help in the top lane i think pinot gang like once yeah, he wasn't but he was yeah. like but he was still like all over the map like he was super impactful he was doing like he was a he was one of if not the most impactful individual person on the map outside of like who he and sorelli and soul um and in all of the games, I think in, in, from Group A. So for me, I think Smeb is is still up there. I think he's been given a shit time, but he's 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 done a lot with what he's got. And um, I think Casa, I think Casa for me really stepped it up. He was he solo yeah. won the game against yeah. SKT. Um, I think I think Casa Casa really deserves that that honourable mention. But it was tight yeah. between Casa and Ziv for me. I think Ziv has also put on a really good performance. Um, and also, I think like Uzi and Mata both deserve, uh, you know, like a, a kind of a shout out as well. Like Mata was like Mata was slamming TSM, and Uzi just went off as splice. But yeah, for me, I think Sven Skeren, Smeb, and Ziv. So uh, there you go. yeah, that's it for us today. I know it's been a long episode. I'm sorry about that, guys, but we had a lot to talk about. Um, so I just want to say thanks for to Raz for coming on. It's been great having you. Some great banter. Some bold yeah. predictions. There we go. We like to see. Indeed. Yeah. So, uh, wh where can we where can we hear from you, Russ? Any shout outs? Anything to say? Anyone to thank? Ooh. Uh, shout out to honestly, yeah. Thank you guys for bringing me on. Actually, that's like a a big nice. shout out for you guys. When it's nice always having this these discussions, especially since off season can be a a, a slow burn. Tough. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Overall, I think that was a it's nice having the discussion. Uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Who, thanks for coming on. Yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, also, really, uh, for me at the very least, I think uh, my plug your show, man. Split. Plug, yeah. plug your show. Oh, Come yeah. on, plug your show. At Razzleplasm, at Vplasm, you know, find myself on uh, maybe episode two comes through. So, no, it will come through. I just, uh, I was thinking about show. having it. It's good. I was wondering. It was actually, it was hilarious the entire time because I actually had to change a bit of that, uh, the direction, and I was still figuring out how to. Uh, get the video editing in. At the end of the day, the resolution was shit. But overall, yeah, check He's it out. He's more clown car music, but other than that, I think it was super good. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. But yeah, check it out. Uh, and thank you guys for uh, taking, you know, watching my cast and not 
completely muting the stream. And if you muted it, you know, then God bless you, man. <laughs> I'll do the same. <laughs> so go on. Jesus. Okay, so we're going to go with Shaka. Ugh. I'm, I'm like super tired. I'm a three hour sleep, so sorry if I yawned a bit to the end. Uh, I need to go get my 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 siesta um, in before Worlds. Actually, I need to finish writing an article before that. Fuck my life. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm sorry if I yawned a bit to the end, but I'm really tired. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the, the episode regardless. And um, you didn't have too much of a gripe with my rants when I say I'm not going to talk much and I talk a lot. So yeah. I love listening to you talk, man. <laughs> so yeah, see you, guys, see you guys tomorrow, I guess. Okay, and not quite last and not quite least, so it's NASA. Yeah, what do you got to uh, say for his NASA? Fun times as always. A lot of uh, controversial opinions, uh, but at least they are reasoned, which we like to um, you know, go yeah. for on this show. Uh, it's it's all about like where is the reasoning come from and not just saying this and that uh, prediction. Sure. Uh, on top of that, you, I if you guys en are enjoying this show and haven't already followed, please follow the Twitch channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube if you don't want to miss any vods. Uh, if you miss the live streams, and yeah, we will see you again tomorrow on the daily debrief. We will indeed. So yeah. Thanks, everyone. I've been your host. I am George. You can find me at Twitter. My name, uh, Twitter is underneath here. I assume if Shaq has got the, the overlay right. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I trust he has. I, I trust he has. Yeah, so uh, as, uh, as Nasa said, uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find the link uh, on any of our Twitter pages. Uh, we link always to the, the YouTube bob when it comes up. We'll let you guys right know. Yeah, it's on the overlay now. Uh, good for good for Cheka. So, unfortunately, we have a really weird URL, but we need to be thirty days active before we can get a um, a unique URL. So we'll let you we'll let you guys know when they're happening. We'll keep you guys updated on everything that's going on Warrior Esports anyway. So if you follow any of us, we'll we'll give you guys regular updates on what's going on. Anything you guys need to know when when we're coming on, what time we'll be what time we'll be on, any guests we're having. We have some great guests. If you guys lined up for next week, so check that out. We'll be do, having a new guest for every daily show, uh, at least we hope, unless somebody cancels last minute. But I'm hoping that won't happen. Um, so yeah, just just keep following us. Uh, follow on Twitch is is really good as well because maybe we can get a partnership and we can get some Twitch emotes in there. Maybe we can get a Raz face. You forgot emote. to mention we, we made three dollars yeah. from from YouTube oh, yeah. vods. Oh yeah. Also, so we can buy ourselves like a cheeseburger. We could, we could proudly announce that the YouTube revenue we have received so far is about three and a half dollars. <laughs> so between all this all this hard work, we can afford one cheeseburger between us, uh, and maybe Raz gets three like ways. Yeah, it's so about that three is. <laughs> we'll, maybe we'll maybe Raz gets a bite. We'll give Raz we'll get a cheese. trip to McDonald's and start cutting it up into individual <laughs> bits. <laughs> yeah, I want I want the I want the pickles. Um. Anyway, yeah, that's it from us. We've talked for too long. I'm sorry the episode's been really long, but I hope it's been it's been good for you guys. I think it's gone really well, and uh, yeah, yeah we we'll, we will we will see you guys tomorrow for our daily debrief after we uh, after we break down all the great things that happen in Group A, and we can uh, we can finally put to rest the one last hope that is. European first seed. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll uh, see you tomorrow.